everyone. Welcome once again to the Allen School and to St. Andrew Speaks. I am Roy Morris, Director of Citizen Engagement and Media Relations in the Prime Minister's Office. And this is your opportunity to address those of us who are here at the head table. Uh, still to come would be the Attorney General, but as you can see, we have with us Deputy Prime Minister on my far right. You have the MP for St. Andrew beside her. Next to him would be Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley. And next to Prime Minister is Senior Minister, Dr. Duguid. Um, also in the audience would be a number of senior public officers who are also here to answer any questions that you may have as well as representatives from some of the ministries who will take notes on anything that arises. Now, in terms of housekeeping, at the back of the room, immediately ahead of me, would be a table with two markers on it, Prime Minister's office. If you are planning to speak tonight, please go to that table, and one of the two persons at that table will take some basic information from you and give you a number. Once they've given you that number, I want you to come back and sit in one of these seats here in the middle. So if you're speaking and you've already been to the table, take one of these seats. If you're not, leave these seats free. Once you've done that, then we will take your presentations in the order in which you went to the table. The mic is right here. Once you have spoken, then you can sit anywhere else in the hall. Very simple operation and it is designed so that we don't have 10, 15, 20 people lined up and standing and waiting all night to speak. So, speak at the t go to the table, give your information, they'll give you a number, sit in one of these seats here, in the order in which you're given numbers, you stand up at the mic, make your presentation, then you sit anywhere else in the auditorium, and if another set, 10 people will take up those seats. So again, this is your night, do not be afraid, do not be embarrassed. If you have an issue you want to raise, this is a good time to do so. If there's something you want to say that represents your thanks, goodwill, feel free as well to make your point. Um, and all we ask is that you give everybody who goes to the mic the opportunity to speak freely. And that's what we do in the country districts, right? We respect everybody's view. So I expect that that will prevail between now and when we finish later in the evening. So I will turn you over to the MP for the parish, for the constituency, to introduce himself, and then we'll go from there. Good night, everyone. And once again, welcome back to St. Andrew Speaks. Tonight is your opportunity to speak, as, as Roy said, and I'm just here to answer what questions I can and to share what information I can about some of the projects that are going on in St. Andrew. So I don't know if the Prime Minister wants to say something before. Right, so without any further ado, I want to invite anyone who has a query to, to come up to the mic and Ask your question. We're still settling matters at the PMO table, but once, okay, our first speaker is ready then. Come closer to the mic, please. Good night, everyone. You're still too far. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night, PM, Deputy PM, Mr. Mr. Duguay. Good night. I'm happy to see everyone, and I want to say a special good night to my MP. Name and Dr. address. Springer. I can I, I spoil you. Pardon? Name and address. I ain't going <laughs> to spoil you. You want me to pretend that I could be you for, for today? I was doing the introduction. Sorry. 
My name is Carlita Andrews. I'm hailing from White Hill, St. Andrew, best parish in Barbados. And again, good night to everyone on the panel. Madam PM, Deputy PM, before I go into my major question, I am very disgruntled at this time because we have every problem there is in Barbados and White Hill. Everybody know this. But right now, there's a catastrophe in White Hill. Right now, where the garbage is concerned. This is five weeks that we haven't have a garbage pickup. Mr. Morris can attest to that because the same truck pickup, his garbage pickup, mine. Now, I've been calling, I must say before I go on, Mr. D. Lightroom, who is the original supervisor, the supervisor for the area, St. Thomas, St. Andrew. He is doing a fantastic job. I spoke to Mr. Padmore, he's also doing a fantastic job. I spoke to Mr. Padmore just before I leave home about this. Now you imagine, I call a senior personnel a sanitation department. And this is what she said, she said to me, my problem is my MP. I said, pardon me? Now, this is the second time I was told this. My problem is my MP. I said, well, I can't, in order for me to get, to get my garbage pickup, I got to get rid of my MP. Well, I am put here by myself, so I can't get rid of it. I said, sometimes you're all speaking to people and don't know who at the other end of the phone. Now, this flies, my MP can attest to this guy, he was who, there Who yesterday. told you that, sorry? When I spoke to Mr. The MP about it, because he was there yesterday. Not the MP. When you call him to say that I you got to get to rid of... I a lady. It was a where, female. Where? Where? I was given a number. No, I and know, but what institution? Is sanitation. it assessment? But that's what I'm asking. So just be... That's what I'm asking. Right, sanitation. This is what she said. So I tell she, well, I am put here by myself. Now, when she said this, you know that... That no. is an irrelevant consideration. Yes, because uh, I, I, put, I said, well, let me uh, tell you, uh, 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 I am put here by myself, so why should I take him up? And to add insult to injury now, this is what happened. Now, Hillaby get a pickup last week. Hillaby get a pickup this week. We haven't had one in five weeks. Mr. Morris is there to attest to that. And now they pick up all done by Mr. Morris today. And we tell us that the only district that ain't get a pickup is White Hill, cause she tell me no, that no, no problem. I, I don't operate at the level of foolish talk that you have heard. <laughs> and I apologize for whoever could be so foolish to tell that you on the, the just just a minute to, um, to tell you this. I am not going to agree that anyone can treat any member of the public in that disparaging way and reflect on an MP when the conversation that UK made and had with her was simply to do that which they are charged by statute to do. So just hold tight. We've heard you. We will deal with this tomorrow. And the MP will get back to you before the end of the day to find out whether the garbage has been picked up or not. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Um, that's an itch. Transport board, no. Madam Deputy PM. I would like to know why the people, I, well, I speak in on a wider margin now for the St. Andrew people. Why St. Andrew people is being treated like this by the transport board? First of all, St. Andrew and Shory Village is the worst. It is the worst. And you dare not get up from there and go over there and ask the supervisors nothing. Because if you ask a question, the bus going to delay further. It's going to delay. This is not right. St. Andrew people are taxpayers too. When I call transport board now, they don't answer me because the phone's got caller's ID. It's not, this right now is not a matter if I'm lying or am I telling the truth because Miss Holder admit this on national radio that I was telling the truth about this because I spoke about it on brass tax and she admit that I was trying to get what they don't answer. Why is this they are being given? People is working. You all are paying people to work and they don't, they ignore him, they picking up who to answer. Why should we be St. Andrew people and taxpayers? Nobody had no right in the bus and three and four hours waiting upon the bus. 
Shirley Village, St. Andrew, they got a lot of um, senior citizens in St. Andrew. What should this be, be going on in this day and age? My MP knows about this because I lay on with him about stuff like this. The bus now, the Baptist Bridge bus, which is my bus, I'm happy to say we have, it's not the best, but I'm thankful for it. It's better than what it was before. But however, the pensioners are being abused by the drivers, especially not the transport board drivers, I must say, the top drivers. They are asked to pay, and some are put off halfway. Some don't go up the hill in White Hill. They put them off at the bottom. Especially when the, the school bus gone to the school, it means that they have to wait an hour or two until the bus comes from the school to take them up the hill. Why should, we be, why, why should this be happening in this era? Our St. Andrew people is not taxpayers. Madam Santia. Madam Carlita. Madam Carlita, good yes, night please. to you, my dear. Good afternoon. Um, you are perfectly right. Nobody should be speaking to you in a disparaging way if you're calling with genuine complaints. I think you do know and are very familiar. You've accepted that the Baxter's um, route has certainly been addressed to some extent. Um, up to when I was in Crab Hill, in, sorry, in oh, crabbing with Ramel recently, um, I, an elderly lady raised the issue of the Shorey Village bus situation. I raised it with Ms. Holder. Um, and asked her to address it. She did admit on that in the occasion that there were some challenges in terms of the inconsistency um, that the elderly person spoke to me about with the, the bus um, being available at the times that were needed. And we're trying to be able to make sure that we, we address that situation. Within the last um, two weeks, I think most of you would be aware that we were able to secure an additional 10 buses. Um, those will shortly go into being deployed across the, the country. Um, and the, obviously on a priority basis, um, we're going to try to address the situation as well within St. Andrew. So I take your point. Um, and as I said, we are working on it. We're hopeful that we will get the additional buses to be able to add to the complement. But I think you can appreciate that we are in a situation where we started with deficiencies in terms of the numbers and we are tr slowly trying to build back up in terms of the number of buses available on the island. To me that the problem is the buses? Sorry? You are saying to me the problem is the lack of buses? We are trying to increase no, I the... No, a question. If no, 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 no. It's a combination of the... the number of buses that are available at any one time, but also, as I said, Ms. Holder would have indicated there are some challenges with the frequency of the buses as well. Uh, in terms of the scheduling of the buses, and obviously we have to make sure that we are able to work on that to have both the TAP buses in operation as well as transport board. Well, listen to me, right? As a commuter, the buses is not the problem. Management is the problem. You just be in the bus stand and see six and seven bus there. They go and tell the driver, the supervisor tell the driver, come and go, let's say Baxter's Bridge. I ain't going, and that's it. So your problem is not the buses. The problem is management. You dare not get up and go across and ask when you're going to get a Shorey Village bus. Because if you only do that, depends on whose supervisor working. The bus can delay three and four hours. People from St. Andrew, am I speaking the truth? Thank you. This is what we are seeing as commuters. This is something that we are seeing. Everybody will be sitting down for it. I don't be frightened to go across at them because they're working for the taxpayers' money. I just go and ask questions. I don't even go upstairs. I just holler hard. Everybody can hear what you say because nobody can say, oh, you say what I ain't say. Nobody dare not get up and go and ask the supervisor. Your problem is not the buses. The problem is management, bad management. They need to be trained. You cannot be te te treating people like that at, yes. in this era. These, these, some of these old folks that catch the bus, they are the ones that barely paved the way for us. And they should not be treated like that. Mm -hmm. Their problem is management and not the buses. And the drivers are saying where they want to go from where they don't want to go. But Linda should be here. Carissa, just to speak to, to your issues, I'm going to address the first one that you raised, and then I'm going to speak to the issue of the bus. Um, as it relates to the garbage. Now, I don't know who spoke to you or what they spoke to you about, but what I can tell you, based on the conversation that we had, and I want to share with St. Andrew the conversation that we had where I was said to be a bully because I was arguing 
And I was fighting for persons in White Hill to get a pickup. That's where we all stand from. The fact that I felt that persons in, in White Hill especially should not be disadvantaged because um, trucks are, were not made available. And when I was told that the trucks were not available, I said, then you have to find another solution. Because as you said, there are taxpayers too. Another solution. If trucks cannot get up the hill because the roads are wet or because the roads are mossy, then another solution has to be found. But you cannot leave the garbage on the road saying that you can't get a truck up there. It's not safe. So why they are the only entity I'm that can I'm telling you, I'm telling you what happened. This is what happened. This is, this is, when, this is why you... I've just asked Senior Minister Dugit to go and speak to the general manager of the SSA. She indicated that the small truck which would get up the hill was not working, that it is working again. And Carlita, you may have the luxury of laughing. I have the obligation of dealing with the general manager of an entity. She has indicated that it will come tomorrow. If it does not come tomorrow, you will reach out to the MP who in any event is in a meeting with me tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. And therefore, I will know whether it has come or not, okay? That, that is accepted. There has to be a presumption of regularity when the senior minister and I speak to the head of the SSA, okay? On the other matter, you can continue, sir. Yeah, just, just to let her know that I have spoken to Ms. Holder about this issue as it relates to the, to the bus. I've spoken to her on more than one occasion. She assured me that she is working towards a solution. I can only go by what she said. And when I get, whenever I get these reports, you can guarantee that I go to her about these reports as I get them. And you know that, that, that I go to her because she calls or she reaches out, she reach out to you. But... It's, a, it's a, a work in progress. We are working towards a solution. And I will, I will be relentless in terms of ensuring that not only what help people get a service, but St. Andrew people on the whole have access to all the benefits that all the rest of us, rest of us in Barbados enjoys. So you can rest assured that the bus issue will be addressed and the garbage issue will be addressed. Now, I spoke to Ms. Jones today. She, was a, she thought that she had taken up the, 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 all of the garbage in St. In St. Andrew because she told me that she took up all the garbage in St. Andrew. But I learned... From, from this evening that she, that she didn't get to all parts. But as Prime Minister said, tomorrow, if, she doesn't, if the garbage isn't taken up, then you can, you can speak to me and I will speak to Prime Minister. So you have 24 hours. But you know that this, this Madam Santia, all of my problems seems to be pointing at you. Yes. I, I, I think Carlita being a little unfair. No, 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 no. I, I, no, want no, me, no, I want me you one day where you hug me. <laughs> so I know that anytime I see you, I can get the details of every issue. No, I and that's why I love you, because you're going to tell me straight. I would love you to announce that you come in and say Andrew every month. I, I, I would I, love I, it. I actually come... I actually come in every month, and Rommel will tell you when no, I've you come, come to... You don't come in White Hill, Hold on, hold on. So I, I, I came in White Hill too, you forget. And you come up from down in the bottom and come up to the top to me, you forget. But I also came in with Rommel, and I also see when people doing things that they shouldn't be doing when we turn up too. So trust me, I've been in St. Andrew. The water situation now, you imagine that we can't get, gar we can't get the garbage pickup. There's much now, what you ain't having the water, you know. They got community tanks in White Hill. The tanks are not being cleaned, they are not being filled. The pipe ain't got no water. Now with this fly, we got flies up there. The MP was there up there yesterday, and he see, he knows what I'm speaking about. They got up, they got burst means and nothing. Wait Hill. I've been calling. Other people have been calling. Nobody ain't coming to fix them, and we cannot get no running water. Good luck for me. Why you wanna hear me punny people ready all the time? It's because I have. You're talking loud, and for some reason, I'm not sure why your voice not going into the mic, even though I know you're talking loud. What I want you to do is slow down and talk because okay. half of what you're saying with the noise and the distance I'm not picking up and I want to be fair to you. Okay, thank how you. How often is the water off today? Every day. No, for how long? This is months. You see, Freddie. No, I'm trying, hold on, I'm trying to get an idea of the problem. 
So if you go along talking, I can't get the idea. But answer your question. So, so therefore, I'm asking you specifically, is the water off each and every day? Yes. For how long? Months, about um, three to four months going on. No, no, no. But For how long in the day? Pardon? How long during the you day is the water You don't get much of off? it, so it, can't, it don't even stand on an hour. Sometimes they are, my neighbors, they don't get any at all. But ha happy for me, I have the time which I'm grateful for. But the thing is, to have this garbage about the place, if you see flies in what you can't even eat properly. Right. Flies, sand flies, mosquitoes, and right. then the bread. But, but, but what I'm trying in. to tell you is that I'm trying to understand the problem. So just, I know you are exuberant in wanting to describe with all of the details. But if you describe with the details and I miss the core, I can't help you. So let's slow down and get back to the core. Yeah. Because I was not aware that people in White Hill are not getting water at all. Because, Rommel, that's not what we've been hearing. No, no, that's not what we've been hearing. So I need to understand with clarity. And Santia, perhaps you need to send somebody from Water Authority up. up. Mr. Dixon, there. Up to two Sundays ago, Mr. Dixon, there, but I may not relate this to him. Right, but two Sundays ago doesn't mean every day. So I'm but trying, it's still ongoing. Hold on. It can be ongoing, but what I'm trying to understand is how many hours a day is on or off. Because unless I understand the nature of the problem, then we can't solve it. M Madam PM, let me explain myself the best way possible. I am not sure what time of the day because I have a pump and the time, and most of the time, there's three months now my pump was on and do an switch off because every time I switch but you're, off. But you're getting water from the mains to fill your tank. No, I have two tanks. I have a rainwater tank and I use a hose. So I don't know the thing about it, right? There are other people that complain. Which of my neighbors just come sometimes and get water from my tank because there is no running water and everybody keep complaining. No I problem. I am going to ask for a report to be given to cabinet by Thursday morning by Water Authority, Santia. And let's get to the bottom of it because it's not making sense to me. <laughs> you understand? And I need to understand the details of it. I need to understand whether it is the whole district or whether it is just some houses or whether some of it has to do with where the houses are located and pressure. I need to understand. They have too much verses up there, Madam PM. That's what I'm saying to you. The verses, you have three and four verses up there in the road. So it's obviously the water going under the earth is not coming to the coming to the point because of too much verses and they are not being fixed. The man that leave come down. I hear you. Them. I hear you. So we need to make sure that we understand what's happening up there and take a report on Thursday, please. We give you that commitment. Thank you. And my last I just wanted to add to that um, PM that we have started some of the mains replacement in the St. Andrew Parish. Um, there is still a lot more to be done, and I think at every parish speaks, the same thing is said, which is that we have means that have to be replaced that are over 100 years old. It isn't something we can do overnight, and we keep reiterating it, but I know that there is obviously the inconvenience that comes from us not being able to replace it as quickly as people would like. I would also suggest, Carlita, because I believe you were the recipient of the tanks on the last Paris Speaks, and you were actually singing the praises of Barbados Water Authority for solving some problems. Am I correct? Right. Some so perhaps people. what we need to do is to ascertain, apart from the, the report in terms of if there are breaks within the means, perhaps we need to just get the names of the persons who are experiencing the challenges and let us see if we can also supply them with some of the, the tanks under the tank program as well. Okay? So if you can share that information with us, we will have the officers investigate. Thank you. All right. And my last item of the day. In terms of what hill we would have changed out the main there was a, a two inch main i think it was replaced with a three inch is it a district line or a main? it's a it's a district like distribution line it's, it's a distribution and not a main. yeah and we would have changed that out and that solved the problem but remember your your system is you're attached to the, the castle grant system you're very at the very end at the most elevated area so when it, whenever there's a drop in pressure up there burst within the system then the persons at the very top are impacted. But what we would have done last year 
in collaboration with the BWA is that we ensure that as many persons as possible from within the upper parts of White Hill receive the, the tanks. That's why, that's why Carlito may not necessarily know when it goes off, if it goes off at all, because, because persons receive tanks and, and almost every house in that area has a tank. Because we understand that there's a challenge getting water to come up that hill, especially if there are breaks in the, in the, on the pipeline going up. Yeah, yeah we put in tanks. Yeah. How many houses have received the tanks that were put in not last year? Not 50% of the houses has not received tanks. How much? Not even 50%. Yeah, but houses. do 50% need not it based on what, Rommel? All right, just let Rommel answer. Because what, what you will find is persons that live further down the hill do not experience the same water outages as the ones at the very top. So they may not necessarily need the tanks like the ones at the top. We had to go based on need based on persons who were, were complaining about water outages the most. And there were cases where persons where Cardita lived at the very top were complaining, but persons further down the hill were getting water. So that is part of the problem. And it's just a matter of pressure and not being able. Rest assured, my dear, it will be investigated. But Thank equally, you. you know, there is... That's why I asked you about gravity earlier. Because I understand that there may be some gravity-related issues up there. And that is why I would, it now makes sense to me that the pump, um, the tanks and the pumps have been given to a number of houses. And the bursts the, too, contributing to it. The, I have no doubt that the bursts are contributing to it, but I want to tell you that it's, guess what? It's not only St. Andrew, it's the entire country. Now, our water authority is made up of two companies that were formed back one in 1838. Mm -hmm. You wanna know how long ago that was? and one just before 1900 in the 1880s or 90s. Mm -hmm. A lot of the pipes, and this is the point we've been making from St. Lucie right back through to St. Philip. A lot of the pipes that we are depending on were put down not even in the last century, but the century before. And Barbados, irrespective of the fact that we are so small, is 2,600 kilometers of pipe. To do all of that will cost a minimum of about 2.6 billion. I didn't say million, but billion. So that it is only, and then think about the fact that you can't dig up every road at the same time. So whether you like it or not, this is a 10 to 15 year exercise in order to be able to replace pipes that were put down in many instances more than a century ago. So. That is why you see every time we're doing major roads and road repairs, we ask for the, the coordination between the utilities companies, in particular the Water Authority and MTW with it. I hear you with respect to the tanks. When we get the report at Cabinet on Thursday, we will hear from them also what is the position and why only some houses receive tanks. Was it on the basis of need? Was it on the basis of shortage? But I don't think it is shortage because Water Authority, don't you have tanks still at um, headquarters? Yeah. Mm, you want to speak? Let Mr. Dixon speak to you. Please. The one who would talk. Good night, everybody. Um, when I went to White Hill, Andrew Dixon is my name. When I went to White Hill, I gave the general manager a report requesting that every house in White Hill because of the situation should be outfitted with a water tank. The GM then passed on that information and within the last couple of months we have completed over 15 extra tanks. There's only about, I don't know if Carlita can correct me, there's about six or seven houses in the White Hill area that may not have tanks. But we are that's still... That's incorrect information, Mr. Dixon. Pardon? It's, that's incorrect. From, my, from the information that I have, there are only about five or six of the houses that didn't receive. But there were two sets of tanks that were being um, given out. There's tanks from the five C's, and the Barbados Water Authority also took it upon themselves after receiving the report for myself in helping White Hill with some tanks. 
So even though what Carlita is saying is true, I'm not contradicting or not arguing with what Carlita is saying, but I'm saying that we at the Water Authority did went ahead in outfitting some of the houses with um, water tanks. So we will continue, Madam Prime Minister, to um, outfit the rest of those who don't have the tanks with the tanks. Just provide a comprehensive report through your minister, Deputy Prime Minister, for Cabinet on Thursday, and we will address the matter, Corlita. You know, we have kept faith, and you've come up here, but I want you to remember that if I came down from Mars and listened to you, I would believe that this government didn't do nothing for you or the people in White Hill, which is Pardon? not true, because the people at the back have been commissioned Dale, the Scotland District Compliant Roads, White Hill is one of the ones that has taken, and just bear with me, because the people in St. Thomas believe that the people of St. Andrew have gotten everything, and that the people of St. Thomas really? have gotten nothing. I want you to go back and listen. I want you to go back and listen to St. Thomas speak, but don't look surprised. I want Rommel also to be honest in here now. And I want Rommel to start talking about all the roads he's been able to get done since last year or what other bridges or roads are under repair. Over to you, Skipper. So we have started with the Shuri Village Road. That was the first road that we did. We, we completed that December 16th of last year. On March 14th, we started White Hill Road. So that's an ongoing project. We also started King Street. That's also an ongoing project. And during that period, we would have done Henry Bourne Highway. So those four roads are roads that commence between. And then, and also there's the, the Thompson Bridge. We refer to it now as the Bruceville Bridge. That one is also being worked on. It can't be worked on during the rainy season, but it's being worked on. Believe me when I, I say this, if we could work on it now, during the rainy season, it will be ongoing, but because of the nature of the Scotland District and the fact that it's being built on a river, we will have to wait to after the rainy season to do actual construction. But we have done four roads. We have start, we have commenced four roads in St. Andrew. Uh, Shuri Village is finished. Ermiborn Highway is almost finished. It's, uh, I think the, the base course has already been laid and we just have to put on the wearing course, which is the second course of Barber Green that is gonna go on there. White Hill is ongoing. We just we have we have an obstacle in our way in a house that has to be demolished. We are working towards have, having those residents relocated from from that house to another property that we recently got the, the all clear from both the Ministry of Housing and from the landlord that everything is in place. And sometime between this week and next week, we hope to move those persons from in White Hill and commence and continue the, the work that we're doing in White Hill. And, and let me tell you, there are also a number of other roads that we have earmarked to start very soon. But unlike other parts of Barbados, we only have half of the year to work in. It's very difficult to work in the Scotland district during the rainy season, almost impossible in some cases. And we have seen evidence of the impact of rain and land slippage when it comes to work. You do not see land slippage in other parts of Barbados when it, when, when it rains, as we are seeing now in Scotland, where we even have a road that has, has encountered challenges that we, I'm sure we're going to have to discuss later tonight as a direct result of land slippage. Okay. All right, madam, thank you very much. And you've had, we're going to let you hold off, Carly. You could come and see Rommel and me anytime. But I want, I've got a line holding up here now. Yes, ma'am. Or oh, yes, sir. Please, Mike. Hello. Right. Yes. If you are the driver of MA thirty six forty seven, Mike Alpha three six four seven, um, your vehicle is blocking access. Um, I had a message for a little while, so you might have been otherwise informed. If you haven't moved it, now would be a good time. Hi, uh, Miss Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Pardon me. All right, cool. So I just want to talk about the housing. Say that again? Okay. Um, Jason Ford, White Hill, St. Andrew. Um, now, I'm not really like a current resident, but uh, we are paying for like the property which we are on. And 
today, I, like, I'm behind the house and I see like all of the land is slipping away from my aunt's house to like several houses on that same block. It's just a couple of banana trees that's behind them. It looks like it's uh, gonna stay there, but it's not. The land is slipping. Every time it rains, it's all flooded and it gets washed away. I don't know um, much about what's going on as far as the move, but I've heard there was a meeting and um, recently, a couple of weeks ago, in St. Anne, well, at George, well, George Payne's old house or wherever it is, but there was a meeting right there, right? And nothing, we have no um, current, like, I would say, um, evidence that we are gonna be moved. And it's not only like a drastic situation, but it's, it's probably one of the most important situations okay. for can, our can, family. Can I invite you to meet with the MP after? Because I know that the plans to be able to relocate people from White Hill to farmers go way back for those who are, whose houses are in a precarious mm -hmm. position. And I can't speak without knowing where the houses are. Um, and quite frankly, I therefore want you to just speak to the MP afterwards okay. and let him make arrangements for you to meet either with the appropriate people if your house is one of the affected ones. Okay. Is okay. that fair? That's, that's fair enough. Lord um, bless you. Can I, can I say one more thing? Yes, sir. Um, on the part where he said the garbage is coming out, that's totally impossible. I had a flight for the 18th. My flight came and went. I've been here now for about three, four weeks. I only seen a garbage truck pass once the first week. That was back in July. So I don't know what's going on. That, that's all well, I need what, to What say. the general manager just indicated was that the small truck, which can go up that hill, mm -hmm. was broken down for some time and that it is working now again. Um, my thing is, if it is working, she says it will come tomorrow. Let us make sure it not only comes tomorrow, but it continues to come on a regular basis. Okay, okay? but I do and understand. And if it doesn't, I'm authorizing the residents, Corlita knows how to find the MP, me, and the DPM. And, okay. and to I know, indicate I know. That's to how them, I found out about this. Exactly. Knows very well. Okay. And the AG for that matter. And not um, to mention but, about... But if, yeah. if it is not regular, do not wait till next year St. Andrew speaks to tell us. Okay. Call us and let us know so we can correct it for you. Okay. okay? And the last, quote, last statement I have to make is about the water pressure. Because today, like she said, the water wasn't on. I went into the shower. The water's not turning on, so I had to go outside. I shower outside now all the time. I've been doing it now from since I came here. The water pressure is not in St. Andrew anymore. That's all I had to say. Yeah. I hear you, and that's why I've asked for the report. If it is a case of us having to put more tanks in there and pumps for everyone who are not being relocated, obviously, we'll look at that, okay? But thank you for coming and sharing. Yes, ma'am. Good evening to the deputy. Good evening to my MP. Good evening to my prime minister. Good evening to my friend, Mr. Marshall out there and Mr. Dujon. I am talking about the Shorey bus. Sunday evening, I leave home at 20 minutes past two to go to catch the Shorey 230 bus. I see no 230 bus. I see no 330 bus. I see no 430 bus. When I decide to go back home, that is Sunday evening, I was going to look for my brother at the hospital. When I did left to go back home, a lady tell me, look, a bus is all coming up. And it is six minutes to five o'clock. Six minutes to five. I still went long because you know what they had to shut at eight. When I come back down now, I get a drop down in the bus stand and say I'm going to catch the 830 bus. I get no 830 bus. I had to sit down there and wait for a 930 bus. A day and last month, I went up at the hospital. And when I come down to tell me the 1230 bus gone, 
I get no 130 bus. I get no two, no 230 bus. I had to sit down there and wait for a 330 bus. Sit down there like I begging for salt. You see? And that good enough, I pay a tax for 31 years and seven months. 31 years and seven months I pay a tax here for. And that will take out my money before I get it. Yes. The next day, I didn't bus stand. I asked the lady, what happened with sure I bus? We ain't got none. And three buses down there park here. Three buses down there park. And then said they ain't got none. The same one to hold herself with one body and a show of in it. <laughs> two to eight, two to careful with two body and a show of in it. And, and about 40 people out there waiting for the show I bus. And the men said, no a bus to show I want to know what happened with the show I bus. I want to have to go Ms. anybody here before the transport board. Yeah, Ms. Lowe, no problem. Um, the DPM told me you spoke to her on Thursday night. Hold on, no the problem. And she has investigated it, so give her a chance and the transport board people to respond to you so that at least she had advanced knowledge when you spoke to her last week. And that is Friday, but this one here is Sunday. Agreed. <laughs> I, 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 and that is why I want her to respond. Uh, thank you, Marie. And you were the elderly lady that I referred to earlier that I spoke to on Friday night. You came to me. I immediately yes. messaged Linda Holder, um, who is here, and I'm going to ask her to address it. She ain't here? She ain't here, yeah. Where she is? She, she's going to stand now and come to the microphone. <laughs> I now see I now see where Kathy get it from. Miss <laughs> Law, I now see where Kathy get it from. Yes. I now see. Miss Walter? Yes, please. Yes. I want you, them people down there that bus stand at the cheap side, get it rid of them. Cause the door gave me no sure bus. You hear what I tell you? We just smell hell for sure bus down there. They don't give me the short right bus, I'm telling you, I ain't telling you no lie. I, I will never say you're telling me lies. Every time that's what's happening. That's, that's what's happening. happening. So we will manage it. And look, you know a Sunday I come to catch a 2.30 bus. I'll get none. I'll get 3.30. I'll get 4.30. You think that is right? No. Huh? No. And I'd pay a tax? <laughs> I, 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 look. That down there and that terminal down cheap so you gotta get rid of them. You got to get rid of them. All them just do a laugh when you go to them. That all them just do a laugh. All them just do do a laugh. You gotta wait till the bus come. And the and bus the apart. Bus the apart. You think it's hey, right for them send a big bus? Send a big bus to hold her say with one body in it. Any show of her? About 40 people there may have insurance right, bus. Huh? Respond <laughs> to us though. I know you had to unburden and let her know what really going on so that she can respond and if she needs to investigate but further. Because you, we laughing, you know, but it is not a joke. And you can't have people sitting down or standing up waiting for hours and hours and hours when they need to get about the ordinary business. Because the government has invested too much money in buses. Santi has now got another 10 buses. And I'm working on another package to be able to see how much more we can add. Plus, we have the TAP buses. Plus, we're working on the Mass Transit Authority. But Linda, deal with the immediate issues, please, of what's happening at Cheapside. about my about chips thank you good night everyone can hear yeah. yes so the deputy prime minister did raise the matter with me and i actually walked with the shuri village departure sheet 
to be able to respond to what you were saying. Based on what you just said to me, it does not actually match what I have here, so I'm not going to go through that. If you say to me that you did not get a bus, we will make sure we correct that. We do have some challenges with the fleet. The Prime Minister referenced it just now, and we're working on that. I know Carlito, because you call, but what we will do is make sure that the cheap site terminal and the responses you get are going to be much more on tune. They'll not say to you, I don't know. They will say to you, it will be at X time. And if you have been waiting for the time, we will fill in the buses. No, ma'am. I, I accept not right. It is not right. It is not right, and I apologize. It is not let, right. Let, let us govern. Let us govern. It is too simple, and I want to say thank you and hello to Van Wick, because the notion of GPSs and cameras in public transport, when, William, we first came to office and raised it, everybody was diffident about it. People now see the wisdom of it, particularly in today's time. So I think that Santi is working to put the cashless machines in the buses. I'm going to ask her to also look and see if we can put GPSs on buses. And that way you won't have the conflict between Coralita and Ms. Lowe, what you're all saying, and what the terminal reporting. And we will be able to go pull up the records and look and see where the bus went and what time it went at the particular things. But I think that, Linda, you can't, there are too many people who are making the complaint about the absence of the bus to Shuri Village on a regular basis. And therefore, I'm asking that you all have a meeting, you review, and you give the residents down here, come back to them in the next few days and report back to them what you have done to deal with their issues. There are too many solutions between the transport board, the TAP program, and the private operators for you not to be benefiting from buses. And therefore, I am going to continue to have a watching brief over this. It is unacceptable, and there is no reason why it shouldn't happen. The transport board got $49 million, I think it was, last year. And the reality is that even though we went through COVID, and we had to reduce the number of people who could travel on buses. We didn't send home anybody during COVID. We didn't stop buses. And the reality is that the government has found it possible to continue running these things. If we are having problems down the line, well, then we need to get granular and fix them. And then we use the technology to also monitor to make sure that there is a clear independent verification mechanism for when these buses are going out. And I'm asking you, Golder, personally, oversee this until we can get it right for the people of St. Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Lowe, for bringing it to our attention. I now know where Kathy get it from. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I remember you. <laughs> Give me the name again, though. Camille Bryant. Good night to the panel. Good night, um, Honorable Prime Minister. Can I hear Something me? happening with the song, man. Can you hear now clearly? Yes, ma'am. I attended this meeting last year, August. Name again? Camille Bryant. Camille Bryant. Yes, please. And I had put forward some issues that I'm having in terms of land slippage and also work that was started by the NTW department on my, at my residence. After the meeting last year, I received a visit um, from the Minister of Transportation. After that meeting, well, in the meeting, the officer would have advised me 
on what would be done and what she would try to have done to rectify some of the issues that I was having. We also spoke about the land slippage to the side um, and with the experts from the soil conservation, they were saying that it would not be feasible to do the necessary to and at the back that was slipping. She asked me to consider possible relocation. However, she said that the work to the front of the house, which NTW had started, she would be in contact with the necessary or the relevant persons to see what can be done in regards to completing the work or actually dealing with the issue of the drainage in those gabion baskets. Also, she would have pointed out to me that she's also going to send a geologist, a team, and they're going to test the soil. And after that assessment, they would get back to me and other residents to determine what would be the long term or short term, whatever the position would be in regards to the residents on that stretch that are experiencing the slippage. On November 9th, I recalled two gentlemen came and they actually told me that they were from, they were working for the government and they had come to do, to, to remove some of the soil to conduct this test. After that, I would have been reaching out to the NTW department, which I still have not heard from anyone, and that was November 6th when the test was done. I pointed out to the panel in the last meeting that we had here that there was a footing that was constructed in front of the Gabian baskets by the NTW, and this footing is actually restricting the water flow, the water from actually exiting the baskets. No one came, nothing has been done since last year, April. The Gabians Th This year, April, could you talk to us last year, August? Nothing has been no, done no, no, since. No, I know, but I'm just trying to clarify. You spoke to us last year, August. August, right. So these so people were in November last year. The test was done in of November. the soil November last year. Uh -huh. And nothing Ms. happened after they did no. the test? Ms. Bashar reassured me that she would speak to the relevant authorities at the MTW and the Soil Conservation to see if they can come to a solution about draining, about the drainage of the Gabian baskets because the water is remaining at the base of the baskets. It cannot exit the baskets because of the footing that is actually directly at the front of the baskets. So oftentimes I have to go and pour cursing out through the baskets to try to keep down the mosquitoes. Right now, I am tired and frustrated because at this point, I have been experiencing tremendous moisture damage, especially mold in my furniture. And don't care who I call at the NTW, either the phone is ringing, or if I try to address the situation, I am not getting through to anybody. So at this point, the gabions are full of water. The water cannot get out. So at any given time, my situation is hazardous because the water not being able to run out or flow as it should, the water eventually is seeping under the house. So if I'm having slippage at the side or the back, the stability of the house is gonna be worse than what it is because eventually I get in the gully. So I would like to know what will be done. On. The DPM will address you and then the MP. Yeah, thanks Camille for raising it. Uh, you are perfectly right um, in terms of the sequence of events, apart from the fact that I am not sure who you contacted at MTW in terms of the follow-up. Um, we would have visited and I think in fairness there were some issues that we had in relation to compromise in relation to pipes that might have been running under your property and also compromising from your end as well and we spoke to you about that. Um, the
maybe a work that had to be done, which I am told There, there were, sorry, there were some concerns regarding the the way in which the pipes were relo were located on the property, and basically, yeah, her pipes from the house. No, no, her pipes from the house, um, and that there were concerns regarding that water obviously compromising and uh, causing the additional slippage. Now, the reality is that in that area there is slippage generally, and in talking to the residents, I mean, even for me coming from the from the city areas, um, I found it alarming that people could say today there is a backyard, and and in another few months you wake up and you don't find a, a coconut tree. Um, so when we visited, those were some of the things that were expressed by the residents. So there is a, a, a general trend of slippage in the area. When we left that site visit, we agreed that we would do a geotechnical survey to do a proper assessment of the area because at the end of the day, we were seeing cracks in some of the houses. Um, we were hearing along the stretch residents complaining that they, they used to have a backyard and uh, over time the, the, the area had been slipping. That report was done by Mr. Errol Clark. Um, it came to cabinet. We, we would have um, endorsed the, the report and the findings of the report, which suggested that housing needed to meet with the residents with a view to being able to um, indicate whether they would put in place the measures for relocation. And so we've set up an infrastructure committee, which is comprising of MTW housing and the senior minister, where we've been looking at the arrangements that can be made now in relation to engaging with the residents as it relates to a possible relocation. So that is where it is at, Minister um, Sutherland is also here. So I think he can probably speak more to it or senior minister in relation to where it is at in terms of that committee. But the, the report essentially said that we're having challenges in that area in terms of slippage and we need to address it. But yeah. my point is the work that was started by NTW at the very front of the house that does not have no drainage at all. Right, so we had this discussion as well, Camille, because I, I know that you Google quite a bit and you were able to tell me a lot of things that the, yep. uh, the workers did not do. Um, I am not technical, but my officers indicated that what they did at the time um, was sufficient, that the work is completed, but also that it was sufficient at the time to address the drainage issues. If since then there are additional issues, I am happy to send them back in, but I'm just saying to you, at the time, the works that they did up to that point had been completed to, to their satisfaction. Ma'am, the work has never been completed. If well, we, were, we will, no, we will probably is, differ on that. But that, all point, I'm saying is that that was my understanding because you are perfectly correct. When I visited, the work was incomplete. Officers were off of the job for some time and you, you alerted me to that as well. Right, but nobody came back since you visited to complete the work. Well, I and will have to investigate to that. You, there is a footing that is above the Gabian baskets, the base of the Gabian baskets. So when the rain falls, mm -hmm. the water goes into the Gabian baskets, but it's nowhere for the water to run out. Mm -hmm. So the water stays in the Gabian baskets until it penetrates underneath the, the house. So remember that we are on clay. So the clay holds the water, right? So my point is, as you would have mentioned to me on your last site visit, you would have contacted NTW and Soil Conservation to see if they can come and work hand in hand to see what they can do mm -hmm. with the current situation to find a way to drain the water from the, ba the baskets or put in drainage. What I'm saying to you is nothing has been done. I constantly have to buy kerosene oil to be pouring at the bottom, pouring through the holes at the bottom of the Gabian baskets to control the water. Some of the residents of Chalkimo are here and I constantly have to scrub down in front of the walkway with Clorox water to try to get rid of the moss because it's a steady flow of, like a stream of water that is coming out. Obviously, all of the water cannot get out. So it's an inconvenience to me. The work was never completed because even the side of the house where they did a temporary access area I still many times walk and fall because the material is loose. So Camille, what I will do, because what you are saying doesn't is conflicting with what the officers have told me, I will pay a visit again 
and I will also get a further report from them as to what words were, were done. But I, up, up to tonight, I have asked them if the words were completed, Whoa. and I was told they were completed. Whoa. So we will pay a visit with you, and we will try to get to the bottom of what it is that has transpired. Um, but I think the, the Ministry of Housing has to follow through now in terms of the relocation and engagement with you in terms of what the next steps are. Because with the rains in particular, I, I know that Cabinet is very concerned about it in terms of the steps that need to be taken to address this situation. So I think housing will be in contact with you in due course regarding that. All right. Minister can we, of Housing, can we make sure that we have a clear report on the way forward for this house and any others that are affected? And if we can have that within two weeks' time, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, we Thank will keep you. playing. But you realize that the fundamental issue is probably relocation now. Okay. Because, because when, when, when we finished, I would have heard that there were a number of issues with respect to monies that you had spent. MTW has spent a considerable amount of money in the past as well. And ultimately, that is why the geotechnical reports have been ordered in order to look at the sustainability of any further action. Okay, so but thank my point you. is yes, relocation was brought to the table, but relocation is not something that is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, it needs to happen sooner rather than later because if it is continuing as you are saying, then they really need to now. The geotechnical reports will what will be what will inform it, and if the geotechnical reports say, look, this is not on for you and the other people, by then the government has to do what it has to do with you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Good evening to the members of the panel. Good evening to the St. Andrew residents. My name is Renadra Small. I'm from East Coast Road. Um, I have a number of concerns this evening, starting with the road works on the East Coast. Uh, the minister would have mentioned that the road works were started last year on the East Coast Road. My first concern about the road works now, two layers have been laid so far on the road. Now that puts the road at about six inches higher than where it was previously. The problem there is, is that it ha now has a slope from the road onto the side of where was the guttering, where was the sidewalk, all of that. It's a very, very, very steep slope. Now the problem is when you're turning, especially at the junction where I live, which is the junction of Grisha Road and East Coast, when you're turning off, there is actually almost a drop off. So almost every vehicle that turns off the road is actually hitting the bottom of the cars. That is one issue. The next issue with the slope of that is that there's no real way to walk along that stretch. So when you're walking along that stretch, you almost have to walk in the road for safety so that you don't fall off into the gutter. Because now it is now at the top of the gutter, so now the road slopes from the road straight to the top of the gutter. So you're literally about to fall off. So that is another issue there. Now, I, I, I empathize with you totally because I have remarked a few times of my complete utter dissatisfaction with the length of time the road project is taken, the quality of work, and I hear concerns about bitumen and other I don't accept that as a sufficient reason. Part of the drop-off that you're talking about is because the road is not finished. And, and the reality is that the road needs to be finished. And, and the contractor needs to be held account and to be able to do so because rest assured, if it was the other way around with payment being late, what would we have to do? Mm -hmm. Pay interest. Wow. So I really feel, Santi, that we need to hold this contractor to account. What I've seen, this has been going October or November last, last year. Yeah. It's not enough. And quite frankly, I was even more incensed. And you told me that somebody who had no authority, Rommel, to do it, did it. But for them to be going in the pack of bordens and taking water out the pond to come and do when they should be finding their own resources to be able to do it. And it's the kind of foolishness that you've got to deal with in this country. If you don't have eyes everywhere, 
you're in trouble because people just trying to cut corners every every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So, madam, I feel your pain. I think the DPM does too. Suffice it to say that the contractor needs to be held accountable for a road that really is to, 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 to link in people on this side of the island. Santi, you want to add? I know Mr. Scantlebury isn't here, but I don't know if Jason, if you, anybody, Mr. Bryce is here that can add anything to the completion of the, this part of the IDB project. No? Okay. We met with the contractors recently, as, as PM said, obviously the residents have had to endure quite a bit, even the dust as well situation, mm -hmm. um, and they tried obviously maybe not the best method in terms of being able to solve the issue, um, but we are a bit closer to completing the project. The other issue, and, and Romel can speak to this too, was the challenges with closing off the entire road, because obviously that is a, a main um, artery. And they had to do obviously one side of the road and then do the other side of the road, which again has made the project take a lot longer than ordinarily it would take if we had the ability to close off. But I think everybody can appreciate it. That stretch of road does not allow for a number of other um, arteries to be able to turn off of. Um, and so that delayed it. The bit issue of bitumen also was a concern. Um, and the truth is, we, we've had to push the contractor from time to time, um, but there have been challenges on both ends, and the rain has also not uh, helped us somewhat in being able to get that particular road done. The other thing is that the, they had to go deeper in terms of the sub-base in order to be able to, um, to, to prepare the road, and that also took additional time in order to get it done, because again, we're working within the Scotland district, and regrettably, what may seem sometimes like a very straightforward uh, road to be done, oftentimes is met with some resistance in terms of the clay structure underneath. Um, so again, I will speak with the, the project manager and see if we can get some timelines so that the residents are aware when that will actually finish. All right. Yes, Ms. Small. Um, as the DPN said, the, work, the road is not completed as yet. It's about 75% completed. And I've noticed that the level of the road now is in some cases three, four, five inches higher than the existing road. Mm -hmm. And there are also cases where there's a backup of water because of the variation in levels. But those are all parts of the accommodation works that will have to be done when the road is completed or as we continue to pave the rain course, rain course of the road, which is the second course. Mm -hmm. Now those issues that were raised, we will try to have the, the contractor address those issues as it relates to the, the pooling of water. I know, I know there's some water. I noticed some water pooling um, in, the, in the bridge area, but that's because that's just the first um, course. Second course, there will be a crown or a camber that should discharge of that water. And I also noticed that there are some areas where uh, persons have to step down where there, where there was uh, a flat surface. We also have, to, we're gonna have to look at those as well. So these are things that we have noted. Um, we've gotten some, some um, complaints and we will seek to have those things addressed. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Apparently, a number of the technical persons are on leave this month, and that's why, and Mr. Boyne, who is acting chief, may not be as familiar with this. Mm. Um, so that's why the others are answering, because obviously in their management meetings, they take the reports. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Anything else, ma'am? Yes, I have a number Thank of you. points. Okay, stemming off for the road works. Um, recently, we would have contacted Mars Boya Polyclinic to have the health inspectors come out because the gutters aren't being cleaned. Now, because the gutters aren't being cleaned, there is some trees, or there are some trees growing out of the gutters that are just about my height. So I'm standing at the bus stop and I can't actually see past the trees, the bush hanging over, to actually see what is coming on the East Coast. Where, where exactly? On the East Coast. On the East Coast. On the East too. Coast. So along that stretch. So there's actually a number of trees in the gutter stopping the water from actually either running off. So now there's a mosquito issue. And NTW was contacted after the health inspector came out. And the reason they said that they haven't come out is because of the road works going on and the heavy equipment on the road. But truth be told, there hasn't been any heavy equipment on the road for months now. And I find it very, very, very disturbing to know 
that the last couple of years, the only time the East Coast roads have been cleaned by NTW is when I post it on social media. I have posted it on social media on a number of different occasions. Shortly after, then they come. I, I want to commend you because I feel as though I'm an inspector sometimes too. Because my PA will tell you that every day I'm calling in and telling spots. And that's why I've asked Santia and William, and they're about to do it now, to have a drone unit established so that we can monitor across the entire island without having to deploy people and be able to see exactly where there are problems, where bush is growing in the gutters. We've just agreed to buy a few more street cleaners as well because I contend con grass can't grow to concrete. It grows out to the crevices when silt, silt accumulates there. And therefore, we need to be able to take action. And it certainly don't reach a foot high in a week. So if you are doing the regular patrols and you're doing, using a drone, it should not be happening. We have 13 depots across the country. And part and parcel of that is to be able to ensure that we deal with that going forward in, in, in a seamless way. Um, we may have to look at some alternative arrangements for keeping these things in, in good order if what we have is not working. Okay. okay? Yes. Okay, my next point. But suffice it to say that you need the depot to go down there and remove them five foot trees. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the gutter. Thank you. Please. Okay, to my next point. Go ahead. Um, the manholes from Bell Plains Supermarket straight to Ada Costa Edwards. Almost every one of those manhole covers are broken. School is about to begin again, and those um, roadways are actually used a lot by the primary school children. Something needs to be done about those manhole covers. Almost every single one of them are broken. So something needs to be done about those with a matter of urgency before school begins. All right. That stretch, that stretch was only recently completed in terms of the, the, the older ones that were there from before. Right, the, site, the actual site from the supermarket straight down to the primary school. Mr. Boyd, would you like to address it? The Senior Minister for Infrastructure is saying you should be able to address this. Yes, so far I'm not seeing you. You're here? I saw him earlier, but I can't see him now. Come forward, sir. I, I am. Um, the maho covers I've been told are being constructed in the depot as we speak, well, and they will be installed when they are completed. That was a question. I can't. I can't. Yeah, the maho covers, but timeline. Timeline. Uh -huh. When is that? Like, set, see some settle, no, please, because the acoustics in this hall are really not good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when is that likely to happen, sir? I would say it is it's before, probably by the end of next week, they will be start the insta installation. Start by the end of the next week, and how long should it take? Probably within a couple of days, because they'll do all one So within time. a week? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. That's the um, the, with regards to the temporary bridge at Borden, there is no reflective signage for nighttime for that bridge, no reflective signage. The temporary bridge at Borden. I was in a bus on my way home, and the driver, I'm not sure, I can't say if he was unaware, if he happened to forget that evening that he has to turn to come across that bridge, but he was going straight. He remembered at almost the very last minute now, if there is some kind of arrow sign that is reflective, I think that that can actually help with some kind of situation like that. That would actually show, because you know sometimes you, you're approaching a, a road and you have like a, a road that says that this is a turn here. 
So I think something needs to be erected there at that point. Coming from, yes, heading into St. Andrew. He, I, I think that evening, he somehow, I don't know if he forgot or something. Yes, Ms. Small, you're, you're perfectly right. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna ask NTW to have at least, a, it looks a sign, a arrow showing that the road actually ends there and it's a sharp right turn. She's referring to the, the bypass road in Bordens mm. and the sharp right turn yes. that, that a bus or a vehicle must take to get onto the bypass road from the, for the old road. Uh, it would be helpful if you can have some sort of arrow pointing to the, will be to the right. I take your point. I will have left, NTW. I will have NTW install an arrow. Right. Thank you for that suggestion. And so my last point, and this is speaking now as the vice president of the PTA of this school. Now, from the time that I started sitting on the executive, I've noticed that I don't have a problem with transportation because my son can't walk to school. However, the transportation issue with those coming from, especially the town, the St. George areas, they have a lot of issues, especially on evenings. One of my... Here? Yes. Alin School. Yes, please. One of my major issues was a couple of evenings, the buses that left St. Andrew to take home these children could not get up some of the hills. There was an incident where the bus could not get up Horse Hill. And some of the children got out the bus so that the bus was able to climb the hill. The bus driver did not wait on those children. When those children walked up the hill to find that there was no bus waiting at the top of the hill, their bags were in the bus. Their things were in the bus. Parents got frantic that evening because some of them did not have, they got out the bus with the intention of getting back in the bus at the top of the hill. There was nothing on those children. Some of them got out without their phone. How, how long ago was this? This was last term. This happened in the last, in okay. the last But was a report term. made to the transport board? The report was made. Okay. But on more than one occasion, we've had children getting out the bus on evenings to climb the hill, and then the drivers not being nice to those children at all. Sometimes the way that those children were being addressed was just not, not happening. A lot of the parents have made complaints to the transport board, to the school, and obviously these complaints are coming in through the PTA as well. So a number of things, those things need to be addressed. They really do. Thank you, ma'am. I'm going to ask Ms. Holder to, to address that matter with, res with respect to the school because the report I got is that there are no issues with the Allen School at this point, <laughs> that there is a very good relationship with the principal um, and the transport board. And therefore, as I turn to PM just now, I'm saying to her, and she said, it feels like there's an alternate reality for the people of St. Andrew and the information that we receive in terms of what is happening. So, Ms. Holder, if you can perhaps just indicate what you have told me and what the board is saying in relation to St. Andrew, please, and to the Allen School. Good evening again. Um, Minister, I would have to investigate this one as well because we did meet with the school, we met with the PT, we did, and everything that was put on the table, we addressed. We heard about an issue last year where a bus went up the hill and it was brought to our attention and we addressed that as well. So if there's something else now, I will now have to speak to the lady and find out what it is because as she's nodding, because she's, she's saying I did address them. I met with the school and I addressed every issue that came up. So it is just that one issue then, otherwise there are no other issues whatsoever with Ali? There's still other issues. I guess we can't talk. <laughs> I leave you all to resolve it. Thank you. This is a report that was obviously dated last year and you have met since the incident happened. We meet every beginning of every school term, we meet through the school term and we come here periodically through the school. Okay, but I think that what you may want to have is some kind of mechanism where persons, like the uh, persons who have spoken here, Ms. Lowe, this young lady, can be able to communicate and get, we're about to establish within the entire government 
a grievance mechanism that will allow people to be able to put their concerns forward and for us to be able to follow up and review them because government cannot be reduced to persons simply being made to suffer as a result of an inefficient delivery of services when the funds are being provided and when the structures are there. So we don't guarantee perfection, but once we find out problems, we need to be able to fix them, face them and fix them, and make sure that we have a continuous relationship where people feel that their voices are being heard and that their problems are being dealt with. So this is beyond Transport Board alone. This is across the entire government, in fairness, okay? And it will probably take us a few more months to get it fully operational, because it will require both an IT platform and a call center, and then the follow-up people um, to be able to do it. Since we have had Mr. Morris working as Director of Citizen Engagement, and I want to thank him for coming out tonight on his vacation, um, but I suppose he's doing it because he's a St. Andrew man too. But anyhow, <laughs> so St. Andrew benefits from him too. Um, but the bottom line is, that, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank him for coming out. But the bottom line is, is that look, every week we tr keep track, not only of what is done with the Paris Speak issues, but we keep track now also of what comes into the office in terms of complaints. And we need to just elevate it to be able to have a more transparent mechanism that is government-wide and a formal grievance mechanism that will allow us to deal with these issues in a mature and transparent and fair way. Okay, fair to the people who are complaining and fair to the people who are being complained about. Okay, so thank you. Good night. Good night to the Ma Good night, Madam PM. Members of the head table, Mr. Spray. Yes, sir. Fellows, constituents of St. Andrew. What's your name? Good night. I'm here tonight to speak broadly on transportation. What's the name again, sir? Uh, Dennis Boyce. Dennis Boyce. I know. I never said last year, and um, I know we elucidated, I, I but yet still nothing has been done. But but by the same token, we need to make sure that all who have not seen you before know who you are and oh. what district <laughs> you come from. I am I am flattered. Uh, Dennis Boyce from Belpen St. Andrew. Thank you, my dear. Right. First, let me congratulate you because you have a high UN profile. I watched you representing Africa, Barbados, and Caribbean. Kudos to you. You have managed to put Barbados on the map. Respectfully so. Very well done. Thank you, sir. I applaud you. Thank you. But you see, as I said, and I said, you're only one person. Internationally, you have a, a good figure in such like. You have officials in Barbados, whereas they should look after, they call it dedication of authority especially in the government. Your officials, ministries, and such like, they're supposed to make you look good. But I realize that you are carrying a tremendous weight on your shoulders. Like Moses in the Bible, you have to, you can't keep, take it all the time. But let me forget the preamble tonight. I would like to address my speech to Mr. Spring, the representative of St. Andrew. But seeing that you are the chairman, I have to go to you. Please, please. I'm batting the first male to bat tonight after a long list of females, and they have done a good job. The lady from White Hill, the other older lady, and such like. They have sort of more or less highlighted what I'm going to say, but the icing on the cake is that we in St. Andrew, especially when it comes to transportation, remind me of what I read long ago, the land that time forgot. <laughs> when I look wrong, this, this, um, under this hall here, and I see the people from Bell Plain, Lakes, and Simons, and such like. We can see the pain it takes on their face. Transportation is a major problem here. And to add insult to injury, it's not a matter about buses, you know. Buses park in the bus stand many a days. But know what do the St. Andrew people, especially Shoei Village people? 
If a nine o'clock bus supposed to come, they wait till nine o'clock and bring. So we like crabs in a barrel, pushing each other and they laugh. Like crab night. We have crab night every single night in, 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 in the bus stand. Look at me. Look at me. Look at these look at other people here. Look. And the bus is parked out there you now, but they send a bus to eat a lodge. Two people. A big bus, you know. And a bus to whatever. One said KFL with two people, two persons. Get sent to one person. And now when it comes to San Angelo, they send a ZR. Yeah. That can only hold 15 people in this country. <laughs> Honorable Prime Minister, we are being punished. We are in pain. We have been in pain for a long time. But yet still we feel, we still allowed to feel the pain. We yeah. love pain. Look, look, look. But I, I am going to require <laughs> yes, a weekly report. I, I should not have to do this. But I'm going to require a weekly report for the deployment of all buses to St. Andrew from all terminals and the times in order to be able to develop a habit of good practice. So I give you the assurance, DPM, have the transport boards on a weekly basis provide a report at the end, or let me do it Monday morning for the previous week to make sure that we know when these buses have left. And Rommel, you have to also obviously keep clear notice on this. A lot of it may depend on the fact that, you know, we have to be able to review data and to tweak decisions. I keep hearing from you all that buses are leaving the terminal with one and two people for Cave Hill and Eden Lodge and nothing coming to St. Andrew. And the question therefore is, how can we have persons see that consistently and not recommend that there be an adjustment to the deployment of the particular buses for certain routes. Now, we shouldn't have to be dealing with this at, at, at the level of Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, but we will, because that is why, as you say, you pay taxes and you deserve to get the appropriate treatment that you merit when you go in the bus stand and you're trying simply to either get to work or get home, okay? So uh, let us agree that we will get that report um, it seems to be worse coming to Shori Village than the rest of St. Andrew. I'm not sure why, but we need to, and uh, uh, you're almost making me believe that there got to be something else in the mortar other than the pestle. Okay? Continue, sir. Yes, Madam PM, but it's only fair, Madam PM, that I blow some smoke. Mr. Spray is a parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Transport and Works, which is equivalent to a junior minister. Mr. Spring should be aware, or ought to have been aware, of the woes that we are having in St. Andrew. He is directly in the ministry. There's not a personal attack, but we in St. Andrew, we need representation. We, Mr. Spring, can only say the word. The bus stand, according to the delegation of authority, falls under the ministry in TW, which under Mr. Cynthia Bradshaw portfolio. Mr. Spring only has to say the word. But we in St. Andrew all the time, we are suffering. And on, on top of that, you know, Johnny Rush, is what they sent to St. Andrew? A ZR that could only hold 15 people for the time I left the bus stand is full and we are languishing, Madam PM. But we hear a lot of that tonight. The ladies spoke eloquently here, the other ladies before me. I'm the first male. We are a lot of test test around 42. But besides that, let me get a solution to the problem. We have there's a lot of buses going to the Bassett Bridge. All due respect to Bassett Bridge. But the solution to the problem, which is the easy solution is to get a big bus to go to Shoei Village. Let the White Hill bus that's parked consistently out there, the carry people at White Hill, come and meet the people on top of Sturges and transport them down to the hill and then go to White Hill. And the big bus can go to Shoei Village. This will eradicate the problem. So now let me elucidate. You understand what I'm saying? And that would will, that will solve the whole problem. But no, they send buses to Bassett Bridge, which I agree. But yet still, Shoei, we are in the bus stand for four and five hours, you know. Like crabs in a barn and pushing. When easily you could send a big bus to Shoei Village and let the bus come up, the, the bus is very brush, sorry, the White Hill bus come up and transport the people and downhill the problem solved. As simple as that, Mr. Mr. Spray. What my Spray need to do though is to go in the district, hold meetings, and let the people formulate their problems. We are crying, we are in pain. We are having a difficult time in St. Andrew. Transportation people now share with for hiring St. Andrew people because they can't get to work. I don't mean it's true. I mean, look at my people. Look. look at the pain all my people face tonight. Look at them. Look. They, 
please don't want St. Andrew people. I have daughters that work in uh, Warrens, and when the bus get there full, a ZR at four o'clock in the evening, one day catch a ZR that went to St. Andrew Church, and when the ZR again, bed paint was full. It can't hold another person. You imagine Madam Payne. You can send a ZR to the country. This impossible is happening to, to our people. As I said, I'm look, sad. Tears let, my eyes let, tonight. Let, let me monitor this for you over the next three months in the first instance. Yes. Weekly. And make sure that this does not happen. And, and I simply, as I said, believe that in addition to that, the GPS in the buses will tell us which buses went where and where they are so there can be no doubting about what the facts are. Okay? Right. Yeah. So uh, let but, us work through on that, my brother. You know, Madam Ma Ma mm -hmm. PM, you are you coming to San Andrew, you were supposed to. I mean, you came to San Andrew tonight. Friday Hill Road, that was in bushes for months. You know there's not a scrap of grass on it because the PM is visiting San Andrew. We have a garbage problem. The garbage truck conveniently came out came out, and there's no garbage now. That's but, the true? Huh? All because they was You are like Jesus here? Christ. No, 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 no. Ah. Don't make that comparison. <laughs> don't make that comparison. But, you, but believe I, you I me. I don't want you to blaspheme, nor me. No, 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 no but, but, but suffice it to say <laughs> that while I am honored that my presence will cause people to work hard, Thank I you. want them to work hard 365. Thank you. But I'm so like, I am a W. Thomas. Believe you me. You had me as a believer. I'm still a believer. But I don't hope in the miracle that the government officials would, would use you as an example. Hard working woman in this country, but you can't do it alone. Government workers, civil servants sit back too long and does nothing. I was a civil servant too for six years. But, and we have done Mr. nothing. Mr. 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 We have done very little. Boys, let me talk straight. Talk straight I, I plan to talk to the country later this week too. <laughs> and, and it's not civil servants alone. Barbadians need for all of us to recognize that COVID clearly has a long lull and a long shadow. And quite frankly, we need to recommit and redouble our efforts in everything that we are doing. And whether it is a job behind a desk, whether it is a job in the road, whether it is a job driving something, the reality is that nobody owes us a living. And we are working hard to continue to command the respect as well as the opportunity for others to do business with us so that our people can earn, our people can be supported, our people can be educated, our people can be treated, our infrastructure can be built out. It will only happen if we work harder. And, and, we, and I say so with all sincerity. I grew up in a country where people took responsibility for in front of their houses and to the side of their houses. I want us to go back to those days. Many hands make light work is not just a slogan. It is a mechanism by which we can achieve progress. And I want you therefore not to focus on public servants alone because the truth is that there is almost, how to put it, if crop over could be all year round, I think Bajans would love it. That's the so. truth. Okay. But equally, mm -hmm. you can only have the benefits at crop over if you put in the work throughout the year to be able to sustain all of the things that we need to sustain and to earn what we need to earn. And I want us to ask the simple question, what am I doing that I can do better? What am I doing that I can do quicker? What am I doing that I can do differently, even if it means thinking outside of the box, so long as it doesn't injure those around me and injure anybody else or anything that I need to do? And I'm not, at the end of the day, I speak in, and Bajans can agree or disagree, but I know this, that what you put in is get out. If you want to reap, you got to do what? Plant and nurture. So and nurture because if you just plant and left it there and no rain ain't come and the plant dying and then you ain't gonna reap properly either so that you have to pay attention and give your all and i'm asking us to do it because i know that on every occasion where we turn up and do it you ain't gonna ask no questions on clear 
we win in. We go in right ahead. We succeed in. But when we look back, and as Bajans will say, we got eye servants. And we're watching everybody and we're waiting to see. And we're looking and we're only talking about rights, but not talking about responsibility. Then we're going to have problems. And all of us in here know that what he's saying is true. So I accept that COVID put us in a habit of not having to push because the restrictions and all other kinds of things change. But you know what? That's behind us. And what we need now to do is work hard, lift hard, push hard, push fast, and do all of the things. Because if we do it and do it together, we can make it. And one of the reasons why I come to these meetings every month and why we make sure that Bajans across the country, well, and anybody globally for that matter, can hear is that this is a time for real talk with family. And anybody who make you feel that everything right, then they would have to be living in heaven and not on earth. Because there will always be issues and there will always be things where people fall down. The hardest thing is what will you do when you learn about it. And that's why I said that we need a grievance mechanism and we're going to deal with it. But believe you me, sir, the heart of the government is in a place. There is no second class citizen in Barbados. And equally, one of the reasons why we have ensured that Rommel has been able to get more of these roads. St. Thomas has been complaining. St. Peter Colin is right there. I've had to be able to say now we need to have some more equitable distribution because what we are dealing with is a country where roads predominantly were not done for the better part of 10 years and bridges have not been done and addressed for decades. And that's why I keep saying that this government feels like Electrolux vacuum cleaner. They tell me they got new brands nowadays, so you got to tell me who the, a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Because all we're doing is cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. But we can't get tired. Because if we get tired, if you end the race, if Shade end the race at 300 meters, what going to happen? Okay. Well, she can't place. She got, however much the stomach start to get stitches, she got to do her past the finish line. And similarly here, the job is not over until it is done. So when I hear about SSA not responding or people putting licks in transport board all the time or water authority, I first tell you that we have to investigate because I've learned in public life that there are three sides to a story. The one you hear, the other one, and somewhere in between. Okay? Secondly, that's why I'm asking for mechanisms that can independently verify and hold people accountable in the delivery of services. Thirdly, I believe strongly that we need to be able to remind each other that golden rule, you didn't learn it at Aline's school, you learned it at the cost of Edwards. Do unto others you as you would have them do unto you. you if everybody simply did that, you know how much better the world would be? Not much, just Barbados. Much better. So that I'm asking us, and that's why these conversations are important. Because if we don't come down here and talk with you, you will hold this in your mind for two, three, four years, and I wouldn't be no wiser, Santa wouldn't be no wiser, William wouldn't be no wiser, Dale wouldn't be no wiser, unless we box you up canvassing on the ground. So we create an opportunity where everybody can come. The parish assemblies, parish, parish assemblies, we hope to have but the truth is that at the same time, we've been coming out of COVID, we've been having to spend additional money in a number of areas from health to education to public works. And we therefore hope that we are going to be in a position to have those parish assemblies up and running by next year. I had hoped that it could have been this year. We've had to take a decision to defer that while doing other things because it's a new institution. But that is what is also going to help apart from the grievance mechanism in being able to give parishes a voice with respect to some deeper form of local governance without having a local government system that taxes people for the delivery of services at both the local and national level. We're not going there, yeah. but we believe that there is need for further devolution of authority and the AG will probably have the, um, the, the policy instructions to draft and because of the shortage of draftsmen, 
that will probably take about six months or so. So I'm uh, being yeah. straight and direct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I thank you, Madam. Ma Madam PM. No, mm. no, no. PM. In the interest of time, I'm not going to stay any long, much longer. Mm. Last year, I raised the issue about the Batset Bridge, the alternative road that was supposed to buy to the by um, the horse place, which is Nature Fun Ranch. You saw it have Iron Santa push it, but I find it sad to say that the course was mill, a lot of that milling, which is the barber green, that could have been placed on the road so that it would get a firm surface that any vehicle would have been able to transverse the road. It was never done. It, the um, Shoei Village Road was also a mill. What they did with the mill stuff, I understand MTW got a lot in the yard. All you had to do is to take it and put it on the road and harden the road. That's all you had to do. And there would be an alternative road to the bridge. It was never done. But St. Andrew people say oh, all wrong. I understand recently, I don't know how to is, it was allegedly told to me that Mr. Spray was torn the area and somebody removed the, or the, was given permission to remove the temporary bar barricade stuff on the road and, if, and the vehicles was able to trans transverse the road for a short while and then it was conveniently put on. But what is the future for Bastards Bridge, Madam P.S.? What is the future? We in San Andrew is a hub. <coughs> we are, is, a, is a major hub. What is the future for Baxter's Bridge? <coughs> yeah, like water, water come, to, come. Water or run. <laughs> Alright then, it's just the Le wait, 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 wait. Ladies and gentlemen, this is only chaser. Mm. I've got a round of rum. <laughs> you honest if you? I rather have strong white rum. But all the, I mean, she offered me, so I'm drinking it. But the rum will come later. <laughs> let, let me respond to the, to the bypass road. I think you're referring to the bypass road that leads from Fun Ranch back into, mm -hmm. into Bruceville. <laughs> now, on, well, our senior, our chief technical officer, he's on leave. And he's returning on Friday. On, on Monday, we're going to take a team down to that road to assess that road. We're going to assess the road. I want to invite my, please. Sorry? I want to invite my, I want to be there then. Of course, you'll get your invite. Thank you. Of course. Right? <laughs> we're going to assess the bridge and we're going to assess the road. Now, worry up to me. If it was entirely up to me, we would not be having this discussion here. But we have to be advised by our technical staff, our engineers. And they are the ones who make the decision as to close bridges or to close roads or to open roads. But I've taken it upon myself to engage the CTO again with the view of just taking a second look, just to get a second opinion as to if the bridge can either take traffic or the road, the bypass road, can be a suitable uh, alternative to the to the bridge and that is going to be going to determine that on 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 Monday when our CTO returns we're going to take a team for NTW and we're also going to take a team for design collaborative and we're going to go and look at the road with the view of of giving the people of St. Andrew at least an access road now I tried in the past to have the road done our engineers and, and if, if need be they can get it and they can speak to it or of the view that the road was not suitable for, for use. I don't agree, but it's not my call. But I'm going to seek a second opinion on, on Monday. And then I will report back to, to the person. So you will hear that the road has been opened. So, but of course you'll be there and you can share. Yeah, but, but at least give a little hope. When, do, when will we, where are we hoping to get uh, Baxter's Road? No, the bridge. No, the bridge. The Baxter's Road Bridge. We, we, call it, we call it Bruceville Bridge, oh, Bruceville, okay. uh, we, and we refer to it in the past as Thompson Bridge. Thompson, okay, Thompson. Now that bridge is, we are at the design stage, there were a number of professional opinions as to how to build the bridge. Now we wanted to build a bridge that can not only withstand a, 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 a storm this year, but in a hundred years can still withstand a storm. Okay. So a bridge with a, a hundred year return, or a 75 year return, because we are aware that the climate is changing. We are seeing more intense um, episodes of rainfall. We're seeing 
um, strange by the patterns that, that, that are not consistent to what would have occurred in the past. So we have to build bridges with the resilience to endure that climate change and the, the variations in the, in the, in the weather, weather patterns that come with it. So the bridge required our engineers' input and the input of the, of the engineers from Complant. We had a, a, a plan before that we also, we also consulted. But in the end, there were, there were three versions of that bridge. In the end, we, we went for a bigger, stronger bridge that is going to have a center pier or a center column. Now, that center column is going to require two things that can't be done right now in the rainy season as the river flows. That's uh, uh, some geotechnical tests that have, that have to be done. Also, it's going to require a center pier to be built, and we cannot build that during the rainy season. So work on that bridge will have to commence after the rainy season, which is in, in late December, early January, when, when the water uh, slows down a bit, we can commence work on the, on the Baxter's Road Bridge. Now, I would have loved to be able to work right through the rainy season. But that would, that would create risk. That, that's a liability. That, that doesn't make any sense in the Scotland district to try to build a road, a, a bridge in a river, in a riverbed during the rainy season because it's going to be washed away. In mm -hmm. fact, that bridge uh, overtop just a few weeks ago with the heavy rains that we had. I'm surprised it didn't overtop over the weekend, if it didn't. But those are some of the challenges that we face when it comes to building in the Scotland district. Yes, the bridge has been closed too long. Yes, I would love to see it open tomorrow. Tomorrow. I wish it was open today. I wish it had remained open last week when whoever opened it, opened it. But the reality is that the bridge is condemned. Our engineers have deemed it um, unsafe at the time. And we're going to have a second look and we're going to come right. with a solution. My, my final my point here, because a lot of the speakers behind me, so I don't want to think. The lady before me make an interesting point about the, those covers on the sidewalks. They are walks. That whole covers. Because of the truck we went on them. And mm -hmm. honestly, as a big person walking on those, you got to be careful that you don't get your feet cut. The government mm -hmm. is responsible for the law of tar. And it's a serious thing for the school children. And those, those coverage have uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, we have noted real, that. And I thank uh, Ms. Small for raising that. Yeah. Uh, we have the officer in charge of the district. He's here. <laughs> Some of the other officers in charge of the depot, they're also here. So yeah. we're going to look at those. We're going to yeah. look at those um, my whole covers. Yeah. And if they, if they require changing all of them, yeah. then we're going to change all of them. Um, but, my, but, the, but the CTO indicated that the covers are being built in the, in the depot as we speak. My final, point, in the to, interest, my final point in the interest of time, are you aware that they don't have no, they, they, they are no public health inspector assigned to this area? No public health inspector. Anybody from the Ministry of Health here? Mars Bay? It's going to challenge what I'm saying tonight. There's no public health inspector. So St. Andrew now, who have grown a bush, the bus pole there, Bell Plain, the major bus pole, the bush is so tall. My wife catch a five o'clock bus in the morning. I have to walk her down. I don't know who man waiting in the bush or a woman for that example to, 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 to ravish her. You understand where you're coming from? Me, and me, those, Mr. Boyce, that, I can find out tomorrow morning, self. So don't worry. No but problem. before you go, I, I wrap it up. But, but you've said enough to let me know that I got to ask but, a question. But, because Barbados got 11 parishes, not 10. But madam, let me one more point because I'm running. Right next door to me, there's an overgrown lot. The bush stall in my house. I asked the inspector guy, a senior inspector named Mr. Belgriff came. He said there's no debushing program, so there's nothing government could do to get the bush eradicated. The bush is right side of me. I beg, such that I cannot get it done. I would like the Honorable PM to perhaps call the Salt Conservation and see if they could clear for me. Because I know the policy of uh, the Ministry of Health was to clear the bush and send the bill to the landowner. But I live in fear. I got three daughters. So, Madam PS, PM, sorry, could you please do me that little favor? Get the bush side of my house. Eradicated. That's all I'm asking. Look, the public health inspector will be the first thing that I will do. I and make sure that you have one if you don't have one. I can't say whether you do or not, um, but I will know by tomorrow morning whether you do or not. I contacted Mr. Yeah, Mr. Belgriff. He told me that apparently nobody to debush the area, so therefore there's nothing he could do. No, but you can't. The, for, the, one of the reasons why the AG is bringing legislation by October. Uh, um, to deal with bush on private properties is because it is foolishness for people to benefit from the value of their property going up. Benefit from the sale of the property yeah. but while you own the property you got the bush going three, four, five, six foot high and the country cannot carry the burden anymore of recalcitrant landowners who do not want to keep their properties clean. And therefore, 
the government is prepared in the interest of the public health and public safety of the country to do it. But if we do it, it is going to go on your land tax bill. And in addition to that, you will get a fine that is separate, a civil penalty that is separate from the cost of cleaning up the bush. You can see how fast everybody who got property sitting down can make sure that they clean all year round. And when they do, it means a lot of people can get extra work in all the communities across Barbados. So hold so, tight. As I said, our biggest problem is that I, we've had a like shortage of draftsmen. Please. But I have seen a copy of the bill, and the house is on recess now. And AG, you want to just come use your voice? Because I, I feel funny talking for you, this part of the world. No, this part of the world, I feel funny talking for you. So you perhaps can add your voice to it. So you actually saw, I finished it. So you actually saw the confession declared for me, please. Oh, I've still got a lot of people behind you, though, Mr. Boyce. I know that. I, 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 people are going to accuse I, I, me I'm, of favoring you and Coralita. I drink you understand? The, I, I drink the water, but the chance to pass will come later from you. That's my, I, that was my gift to you. But AG answering you, though. Yes, um, we, we've been working fairly steadily on getting legislation together, but there have been some challenges. You will see that every week uh, there's new legislation before Parliament. We do have a shortage of drafts, men and women, and therefore it's taking a bit of time. In addition to that, the Prime Minister has added a little bit to it because she also wants us to put arrangements in place to make sure that people maintain not just the ground, but also the buildings that are on the ground. Um, so that's added a little wrinkle, but we're working on it assiduously. Good evening, all. Uh, I am going to forego the protocol and all of that and say hi to everyone. I am Glyne Williams, and I am a new resident of St. Andrew. I have uh, moved here uh, about nine, maybe six months ago. Uh, and with that, I have um, noticed a couple of things, and I really where, don't have- where, where have you moved to? I'm not, I didn't get the Bro district. I moved to Bruce Vale. Fine, thank you. And, and I, I live a few feet, 100 feet from the bridge, the Thompson Bridge, uh, and I'm glad the minister was able to uh, give some details about that because his first statement indicated something more spiritual than, than what I was able to see. Uh, and so thank you for, for explaining what is being done uh, when you say work is being done and no one can cross the bridge or you don't see anyone out there, it, it is um, kind of strange. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you for that. Uh, the Prime Minister, I must say, you mentioned that grass doesn't grow in concrete. And uh, that is absolutely true, but I noticed you stood clear of bitumen. Uh, in, in that street, the grass is literally growing out of the road. Uh, and I am, I am um, very, surprised at that I recall I do have a solution by the way but I've noticed uh, years when I grew up in Cave Hill we used to have a large number of people coming along the side of the street and there were weeding they use holes and they use sickles and and, uh, and and cutlasses and now you have these wonderful weed whackers but you have more grass than anything else that I've ever seen um, so I do have a solution. I'm not one for long talk. I'll get straight to the uh, solution. And my solution is really simple. And if you would uh, join me with this, I believe it could possibly be replicated so that we can keep our area clean. Right across from me, there is a, um, a horse farm. Uh, and one of the things that I'm fearful of are the rats. Uh, there are horses there, so there will be feed, and certainly wherever there's food, there's a rat. Uh, they haven't found my home yet, but I don't give it uh, too long because of the grass that is growing uh, and the bush and all of that that's in the area. So my solution is I will offer my services to cut the grass two times a month in that area. It is a place where no one lives but the, the bushes are growing, making the road a little smaller every time you drive by. Uh, the only thing that I ask the minister to consider is to provide me with a weed whacker. I don't want the weed whacker 
just lend me a weed whacker twice a month and I will go out and cut in front of mine and then I will do about three other houses to my right in order to keep that area clean. Uh, I will do that gratis. Absolutely no cost to anyone, my service. Uh, so if you are willing to join me in that plan, I think that is something that most of us could probably live with uh, in order to keep the grass and the, the, the rodents and all that from visiting our homes. And that's my talk. I think you heard me say earlier that we're thinking of some out-of-the-box solutions. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Rommel and NCC are trying to help us with one. I need the drone unit up mm -hmm. um, in order for us to be able to see how best we can refine what we're thinking of. Mm -hmm. But suffice it to say that we understand that the system that we have is not the best system. And wherever we can decentralize and allow people in communities to take responsibility for their communities, we are going to have a better outcome. So I hear you, and I thank you for that recommendation, and that certainly can be one in the mix for the decentralization for the provision of these services. I don't know if we'll you speak, We will speak afterwards, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Williams. Before the next speaker, please, um, if you've already indicated that you wish to speak, uh, please come over from the audience into one of the seats provided so we can have a clear picture. Because according to my list, there are 11 people still left to speak. Well, 10 now, um, but I'm not seeing them. I'm Make sure you have already gone to the table at the back and given your name and information so that you can get a number so you don't jump ahead of those who are already in the line. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Good night to everybody. Um, Alice Nansibi. Do others, under, uh, unto others as you let them to do unto you. As a former student of Alice School... I, I, you may have to... Stay firm in front of the mic because your voice coming and going. What's the name again and where you live? My name, my name is Dwayne Goddard, right? Um, I come from Bruceville, St. Andrew, and I'm also a driver. I live right next to the bridge, actually, right? Um, Saints. The beginning of COVID, the bridge has been closed. And it has been a very in, uh, how to put it, inconvenience to me and to everybody in St. Andrew. Right? Um, just the other day, y'all came and moved the stuff. And for the time y'all moved the stuff, traffic had started, started to run. Right? Stuff was placed back. No more traffic can run. Right? Mr. Springer, you had mentioned earlier in your statements that ro the roads between Bell Plain and Sturges, especially the bridges, had been, had been, been or had started being fixed. Right? I have not seen any of these bridges being fixed, okay? The bridge side of me, it has, it was stabilized, let me say, a couple of years ago, in which that beams were placed underneath the bridge, right? We have another bridge up by the shop, in which that it doesn't have no support whatsoever, and buses come over that bridge and come down to the same bridge that is closed, right? I live in the district, and I see underneath the bridge, and there ain't, there ain't a cracking to, to say that it is going to fall, and even if it does fall, it has support. Y'all spent money and put support underneath this bridge. Y'all came and y'all cut a road. This is this year. So all the rest of the times, we had to be 
we had to be going all the way around that hole, around that hole in order to get to Bridgetown. Right then, it, it only takes, well, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get from Sturgis to Bell Plain. Right? So imagine me, imagine people in my district have to park on one side of the road, I have to get out and walk to get home. If not, I got to drive 20 to 30 minutes on really bad road. Bear in mind, I, have to, I had to change my suspension since that. Right? And suspension ain't cheap. We, you have to drive from wrong, from upstairs all the way around, which takes 30 minutes on really, really bad road. Right? To get to bad plane. Now, this is Ministry of Transport. How can you close a bridge and have another bridge that is worse, 15 or 20 times worse than a bridge that is closed? Not, not only that, you all started to work on Fruitful Hill. Fruitful Hill came to a stop. It went on the news, and then it came to a full stop. Water started to come down the road. Yeah? Eating out the road. I came down that road myself with my vehicle. I couldn't believe that this was a road that was, was being repaired. Right? I came down that road. I couldn't believe it. But since then, the road is still closed. So even if a man want and want to come down through that hole and go up top parts road and he wants swing and come through to come down the road, in fact, you ain't gonna get far, call the bridge shot. So, so even that road, it, 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 it still don't make sense. But I, I just mention it due to the fact that this is government, this is transport board, this is taxpayers' money, right? And this is things that are supposed to be accounted for, right? <laughs> I am going to ask for a meeting. Look, the, the substantive acting chief technical officer is on vacation. He's back Monday. The DPM, I'm going to ask her to come down here next week and meet with you all on this issue of bridges with the substantive Mr. Tudor and the rest of the, rest of the team. Just bear with me because in fairness, the persons who can answer you specifically on the engineering, as I indicated earlier, are on leave. So Mr. Tudor is back to work Monday. And then also Mr. Scantbury is back when? In two weeks' time. But I'm still going to ask, at least with Mr. Tudor and on the bridges, and Mr. Austin is here. But, but also, I am asking for you to still come and meet with Mr. Tudor and report to cabinet as to what is the priority list because clearly also one of the reasons we've been spending time trying to build up what a resilient Barbados looks like is that the first five six months of the year we had drought not true yes and now we, we did. got floods yeah, yes we did and we're getting we're getting so that what I, I call the season of superlatives the driest the wettest the hottest the everything is you understand so that we have to be able to change what we're doing. From the 1st of September, we have someone else coming on board whose sole work is to be able to help us de de develop the standards for the changes in our infrastructure for a climate resilient Barbados. Because whereas before you could do certain things um, because you weren't getting the deluge of rain or whatever, you can't do them anymore, and we're going to have to change almost all the standards across the infrastructural ministries in housing and in public works if we are not to spend good money and lose it because of rain or land slippage or different other things. And we're going to have to do the designs, look and see what are the changes, and then have the conversations with the local population too, because there may well be some areas, as we heard earlier tonight, where people may not be able to stay. We see it in parts of White Hill. We see it in parts of um, um, Hopewell. And, and with respect to some of the issues, Fruitful Hill, 
the, the, the road that was done, if it is going again, you know, we, we, what got changed and how we do it. What cabinet is also looking at is concrete roads in some areas too, because concrete will have more resilience in certain districts than will the normal asphalt and bitumen, correct? Yeah. So you mentioned concrete. We're living concrete. in different times, you, my you brother. You mentioned concrete. The MTW did a section years back on Bruceville with concrete, right? They put on Gabriel's, then they placed concrete on top of it. That alone was, that alone is a statement because the concrete is still up and there has not been no repairs done to that road, done to that Pacific piece since then. So the concrete on roads is a good idea and it also gives work, the masons and other workers something to do. So I do understand the concrete what you're saying, but yet still, we had three years of drought. We had umpteen times, even before the, 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 this government get in, you understand, to repair the road and nothing was done, right? That way I tell you, I feel like Dyson vacuum cleaner. You understand? But, but, what, but what, hold tight, my brother. What is, what is a little bit annoying is that how can you let something heavy pass over a bridge, over a bridge that is. And that told is to why, me. hold on, with, with all due respect, I want you to listen to me and, and think. <coughs> I want the DPM to come down next week with Mr. Tudor and you all go and meet and look at the bridges you're talking about. I don't want you come only in a town hall and speak before a mic. I want to give you the chance to go with the team and to be able to point out your concerns. Last year, I made it clear with the same Mr. Boyce, that local knowledge matters. It cannot replace all scientific or engineering knowledge, but equally scientific and engineering knowledge cannot replace local knowledge either. So let us make sure, you, I thank you for raising it, but let us make sure that they go with you because when you listen to you, you clearly have been reflecting and studying this thing for a long time and monitoring and being observant. So I want you, therefore, to just hold tight and let Rommel organize when next week they're going to be able to meet with you and some other residents, Mr. Boyce and some others, um, on a tour to be able to see how we're dealing with these bridges. I think that it was in St. Joseph that Santia made the point that we have reports showing that bridges have been ignored in this country for 50 and 60 years. Mm -hmm. 50, 60 years. So that, believe you me, we will do what is necessary to keep people safe because we understand it. But also, we have been affected by COVID and COVID put a lash in our chest where for almost three years, we could not execute the kind of work that we wanted to because of the restriction of movements the difficulty in supplies and also the reallocation of funding to be able to help with the healthcare needs of the country to make sure we could minimize the number of deaths. We passed that. So we're back to the stage of doing what we need to do. Rommel has said to you the difficulties that the engineers have advised that you can't do serious construction 12 months a year and you have to be able to do it outside of the rainy season. I hope therefore that we maximize that period once December comes. And I'm urging the ministry to make sure that all of the designs are completed in this down period when you can't be doing the heavy infrastructure work so that as soon as the wet season is finished and the dry season starts, it can be literally um, full steam ahead. And I want to be able to suggest too that there may well be a case for longer days if possible and if it is safe in order to maximize the six months of the dry season, rather than just believing that you can work an eight month day, an uh, eight hour day in the dry season. If we can work longer days in the dry season to, um, to, to compensate for the fact that we lose the wet season, then it means working in accommodation with the residents in the area and everyone else so that we can get the work done quicker. Agreed? Agreed. That's fair? All right, so Rommel, yeah. you have his information. Yeah, I'll have to get your information, Dwayne. Um, but just to add quickly that we would have met on the bridge 
uh, and Tony Carrington and one of the residents last week. Um, and we also visited the other bridge that you referred to by Akitree Bar. I was told, I was told that yeah. y'all had visited the, the Akitree oh. Bar, but the same Tony Carrington, I, I'm familiar with him, but as I said, we, we came you, to the you same solved, conclusion. You solved a I problem saw by cutting the road out by, out by, um, by the fan ranch. Nature, nature, nature. But then, then the road, the road just as bad as that hole. So even, even taking a little short road, machine up your whole suspension, That's where vehicles we're going down. taking up. So That's where we're going down on Monday. So y'all ain't do nothing to, to, to assist nobody right now. That's what we're going on Monday. That's straight talk, yeah? That's what we're going there on Monday to look at it. Right? So hopefully I will get some sort of resolve and that's it. Yeah? So Monday, Monday just, we will go down. Just remember, do unto others as you like them to do unto you. And that goes to the government as a whole and the school student, at least non sebi I always remember that. Yeah. yeah. You think it's, 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 Yeah, good night. My name is Marcus, or Andrew Williams, if you prefer. But I don't really want to dwell too long about all the problems, because we know we have a lot of problems. But my problem is I have one question to ask. What is your last name, Marcus? Andrew William? Williams. Okay. Yeah. I have just one question to ask. I just would like actually uh, feedback, or actually point in the right direction of what's going on with the Gavelin building in St. Andrew, especially Fruitful Hill and Trail Path. You mean in terms of the work not restarting? Yeah, if the right. work... So um, we had some challenges, as PM said earlier, in terms of getting the Gabians on island. Um, and because of COVID, obviously, we had challenges with the supply chain. We were able, and I must tell you that even now with the amount of work that we have going forward, we've actually been putting in for additional Gabians because over the next few months, um, not only under the MTWs program, but also through the um, Complant project, we will be seeing a number of persons involved in the Gabian building work. Um, the one at, it would be Trier Path and I think Fruitful Hill, um, they require some boulders, which I understand are coming on Monday, and they should be able to start back the works on those two projects, certainly next week. All right. Okay, that is just my question, though. Okay. Thanks. Thank, thank you, my dear Mr. Williams. Next person. Good night, good night to everybody. Yes, sir, what's the name, sir? Ruben Sealy. Yes, sir. Shuri Village. Where, where do you live, Mr. Sealy? Shuri Village? <laughs> My first concern is the moral decay that we are coming to in this country. Last week, Two young ladies went for an interview, and on the paper I had for gender, male, female, or other. My coming up, I would know that a male would have certain organs, a female would have certain organs, but what would other have? So we're having a problem there as it relates to somebody trying to confuse these young people's heads. <clears throat> Madam Prime Minister, I would have stood here last year and raised an issue with the National Housing Corporation as it relates to a plot of land that we cannot get a total for. You would have suggested that you will look into the matter. So far, nothing has come about. 
I check with NHC again today. Are you getting the usual? The person is not available. Not available. What would you it's right there, just in front of you. Come one side, and you will meet him tomorrow morning at NHC. Yes. Come right, right here. Look at him in all black, like you. Oh, that's how you Oh. Come right here. So you go and talk to him now, and you can meet him. He will tell you whether it be 9, 9, 30, 10, but you can meet him tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. Okay? All right. I'm going to move on to the bridge by the Fine Ranch. A few years ago, you could walk under that bridge. Now you have to bend and go down your knees to get under that bridge. It needs clearing so that the, the area there, as soon as you get to the front rash, it would not flood. So we need some action on that because as soon as the rain sets up, you have flooding there on that bridge and you can't pass. So coming from Bridgetown and to come all around there and then the rainfall, you can't pass, you got to spend three hours before the water stops. Out. And all that needs is the mouth for the bridge needs clearing. <coughs> a request was made for the trees, those mango trees, to be cleared and the area. Some youngsters wanted to rent the land to raise some bees. All we have is bush again. Nothing has been done on that either. And that was raised at the last parish assembly. The parish, St. Andrew speaks. And there's about a whole year now, nothing has been done yet. Yes, Ruben. Um, yes, I recall, Ruben, I recall the conversation last year as it relates to using, utilizing the, the area, you referring to the area above high gates or the soil. You're referring to that area? You want to pass the fine ranch. Where the, where the fine ranch ends. Mm -hmm. the, the I know what you mean. The thing for the paddock. And persons are interested in using the space for? The, the space that has the mango trees. Mm -hmm. This would be, as soon as you pass the bridge, going right up to Singler's Bridge. There are a lot of mango trees in there. Oh, you ought to move the, move the bush. Yeah. There are mango trees in there. What I would suggest you to do is that you, you we, speak, we will speak to this afterwards and we'll get the names of the persons that will ask questions as, as to the ownership of the land. It's, it's got my line. It's got my line. Mm. I'm asking him to find out when can he meet with you and the youngsters, yeah. with the Minister of Agriculture and the people in charge at Haggart's to see what is possible. I can't tell you yes or I can't tell you no because I don't know what plans they have for the land but I want them to make sure that they can tell you yes or no, and if it is no, to give you and us a reason why it would be no, and to find an alternative site for them, because the ministry has a study on beekeeping from AICA, and one of the things that we are trying to encourage the ministry to do is to be able to have contract buying for people producing honey. Honey doesn't spoil, and there's a lot of fake honey coming on the market, and really and truly, Bajans need to be educated as to be able to use proper honey and make sure that we understand that when you buy it, it don't spoil. Far from that, we need to be doing it and exporting it. So, and this is an area where I think more young people can become involved and at least even if it is an interim mechanism or a hobby or a supplement to other income, it is something that they can do. So please. Afterwards, we'll speak. No problem. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Mm -hmm. Seeley, just come here by the Minister of Agriculture and between him, you and Rommel will set a time for when you can meet these youngsters. Okay? If not this week, next week. I can't presuppose what their time is like. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Who's next? A pleasant good evening, Honorable Mia. I'm Maura Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados. Honorable Santia Bradshaw, Deputy PM, Dr. Ramel Springer, MP for St. Andrew, and other honorable members of Parliament. My name is Donna Maynard, and I'm from Lake St. Andrew. I'm a new resident of St. Andrew, but I was educated in this lovely establishment here. 
Um, I have some queries, some things I need for you to clarify for me. Um, the first one is reference to the outpatients clinic. Um, what is the rationale between for the polyclinic to be open only two days a week? I also want to know what are the actual opening hours and what are the operating hours. Why I say that is that um, sometimes you pass by the polyclinic and you will see patients there from 7.45. When 8.45, they're still outside waiting to get inside the polyclinic. If you turn up at a quarter past 9 or 9.30, you're told by the guard that the doctor is no longer seeing any patients. Um, are there any plans in the future to have the polyclinic open for extended hours? Sorry, the outpatient clinic. Are there any future plans to have it um, extended Ma Madam, or additional hours? I can tell you, the, the, the substantive minister of health is on leave on, on, um, at this point in time, mm. and no one from the CMO or public health I see here at the moment. Suffice mm. it to say, however, that I believe it may have to do with volume and the fact that St. Andrew and St. Joseph would have both had their, um, their run out of Morris Bayer, aren't they? And, and they both would have had some days of the week as opposed to every day. But what I can do is have Mr. Morris, who will be back at work when? Mm -hmm. In two weeks' time? Have him liaise with you and provide the information for you so that we can get a better appreciation. But I don't think it has ever been open five days a week, but I speak no. subject to correction. No. And that's but, the point. But as and I, I said, I wanted to be has, clarified. But I think a lot of it has to do with, with demand mm -hmm. and population servicing because there are other parishes and other polyclinics mm -hmm. that are having a much higher throughput of traffic. So that may have to do with it, okay? Yes, okay. Thank My you. second question refers uh, to transportation. Um, as you know, Ada Costa Edwards is the only primary school in St. Andrew. A large population of those students come from Chalky Mount, the Bissex area, and Cambridge area. Now, there is no direct everyday... Excuse me a minute, Ms. Maynard. Um, please, please, I really am going to ask people to allow persons to speak in quiet because we're going to have difficulty hearing them and capturing what they're saying. Um, we don't only come here to listen or talk, we come to also take notes and follow up to see as far as possible if we can resolve. So let's just let persons speak um, in quiet as far as possible. Thank you. Yes, thank you. As I was saying, um, a large population of the students come from Cambridge, Chalky Mount area in Bissex. There is a bus service that brings them to school on mornings and one that picks them up in the evening times. However, if the children are sick, the parents cannot get to them during the course of the day. If we have extracurricular activities during the evening, the parents, the children cannot attend because there's no transportation after three o'clock to accommodate these activities. Even when you invite parents to farm level meetings during the course of the day or even if a PTA meeting on evenings, the parents do not attend because there is no transportation. I would like to know if in the future, maybe hopefully by September, if you could consider putting a shuttle service, even if it runs every two day, sorry, every two hours or so, almost similar to the Bashiba bus, bus that will go to and from Chalky Mount. I mean, we have the gas station here. We just opened back at the post office. We have the outpatient clinics, and I know there are residents in the community of Chalky Mount and Bissex who would need to access those services. And I wanted to talk about further transportation and roadworks, but basically everybody has touched on those subjects, so that is basically what I have to say. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Thank you very much. Um. You were talking about a shuttle service from Chalky Mount to Belle Plain. Yes, as I said, right now what happens, a bus no, comes I, on mornings, picks I, up I, the school I children. You, but me? I just wanted to confirm the locations. Y yes, Chalky yes, Mount the Chalky Mount area, Chalky Mount, Cambridge, Bissex and you're and saying stuff. basically every two hours so as to facilitate in between the morning and the afternoon. <laughs> Where yes. there's no transport. Where there's, there's no, once that bus brings the children to school and collects them on evening, there's nothing coming mm -hmm. from Chalky Mount. The best solution may be to find somebody within the community as well who is running a public transport vehicle who or can Or even help something similar to the that, shuttle that the runs shuttle. up to Sturges and comes back and parts. Something, something like that that can no, we accommodate hear you. that. The DPM has heard you and we'll, we'll check it out. All right, follow up, Rama. Thank you.
Thank you, Mom, for sharing with us. Good night. I am Hyacinth Ramsey of Shorey Village in St. Andrew. Didn't hear your name quite, ma'am. I am Hyacinth Ramsey of Shorey Village, Ramsey. St. Andrew. And this is my son, Chet Wayne Ramsey. Well, the issue I'm going to speak of, the minister, the minister is aware, but since the road works, there are three, three of my neighbors, their driveway was dug up, marl put in, and it ain't come back and finish yet. In front of my house, there's a big hole. There's a big hole that waterworks dug up, and they didn't fill it back in yet. Also, my neighbor, last year, she mentioned the problems with the house and rural, and she ain't get no resolution on that yet. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Ramsey, yes, I'm going to ask the MP to come and address it. Um, you're aware of the problem, Rommel? Yes, I'm very aware of the problem. Yes, he's aware. Um, we, we, with me, the minister, we have we've had, uh, we, we had to butt heads with the ministry because the ministry, with the ministry and the policy of the officers within the ministry as it relates to accommodation works. What she's referring to are accommodation works as a result of the road that we built in mm -hmm. Shuri Village. And there were some persons who got, who got um, decent driveways okay. made of, of concrete, and there were others that were left out. True. Since when we're building driveways? That's, the, that's exactly what, what is W. Not driveways, it's just a sidewalk. It's just oh, five feet sidewalks. in. Sidewalks, then yes. we call it, call it the right name. Yeah. But driveways, not a mm -hmm. sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Driveways. But, but we, I said driveway, but I mean, you know what I mean. And that is just basically, it's something that I've raised Minister has also spoken to it, and we have asked our, our NTW uh, officers to address it. It will be addressed. And that hole that you refer to, I also raised that with, with, with um, Mr. Yeah, BWA. So that has to be addressed as well. I raised, I raised it. I raised it. Um, I'm on one occasion, but I will raise it again. So I, hopefully by this week or next week, it's addressed. I saw it on, on, on Wednesday when I visited your house. All right. I was surprised to see that it was still there. Very because well. I raised it on more on one occasion with the officer with responsi responsibility for that area. All right, so we're going to have that address for you. Well, this time I'm, I'm at home, so I should see when it happens. Exactly. I give you the assurance the chairman of the Water Authority is sitting behind there. And if you go to the gentleman in the blue check shirt and tell him where you live, he will make sure that that hole is repaired within the next week or two. Very right, well. Mr. Chairman? Thank you very much. Good night. Chatwin Ramsey, Shuri Village. Um, to add to that, the property next door, my uncle, the where water was dug up the right in front of his house for the, the main to pass. It was not it just, the stuff just chop out there anyhow. So that needs um, leveling out as well. But my thing is... Just, just that where... It's your mom, right? Yes. Just go follow her and be able to identify the other area where reinstatement is still required. Right. All but I think, Mr. Area. Wright, the issue is once you dig up, you repair. Once you dig up, you reinstate. Mm -hmm. And that has to become as basic as get up in the morning and go and brush your teeth, go and bathe, and do all the other ablutions that you need supposed to do. You understand? It cannot be that you dig up and leave things open. And, and if there are issues with access to material or different things, then we need to know. Because in fairness, there has been a supply disruption. I don't know how many people comb the internet and look at the news sometimes. But there are 200 ships waiting to get through the Panama Canal. A lot of the equipment and the needs that we have that may be coming from China or Japan would be coming through the Panama Canal into the Americas. Those 200 ships are in a traffic jam. You know why they're in a traffic jam? Because of the climate crisis. Because you need water in order for the ship to be able to pass through the canal. 
but because there is no water available on a consistent basis, they have had to slow down the number of ships coming through the canal. And I hope that Bajans will see it and check on it for themselves because these are not things that we're making up. If you think a 200 car backup is a traffic jam, imagine a 200 ship backup trying to get through the Panama Canal. Some are taking the longer route, but to take the longer route means greater expense because you've got to go all the way down below the tip of Latin America and come all the way back up. So it's time, money, um, marine, diesel, oil. Okay? So I hear you, and um, we'll get on top of what we can, but I do want the country to know we're not living in normal times. I know what it is to be in a government when there were normal times, when all, like some of you, uh, Mr. Nestle, like when you used to work in government, you didn't have these kind of problems because the world was a different world at that time. But now, you can't rely on just-in-time ordering. You have to be able to keep supplies and stock there because if you're missing a pump or you're missing a part or you're missing a washer, the back order may be long and others waiting on it and you may not get it for three and four and six months. So you have to move differently in these times, quite frankly. It's almost as if the world is at war, which it is. It's at war with climate. It's at war previously with the pandemic. It's at war with a number of things that has disrupted how our lives can be smooth. Okay? Right. Thank you, sir. Um, my thing is, my other thing is, others before spoke about bushing, the bushing. And someone mentioned Farley Hill. That was cleared this week, last week, I think. Yes. Um, my thing is that a lot of big equipment came in off Harley Hill, cleared the side of the road, obviously damaging it. In my opinion, that don't make any sense. It needs maintaining. Um, I don't know how you would have gotten down here, or passed for Harley Hill. I didn't pass the Douglas. Douglas Village, you can't even walk on the sidewalks. It's all overgrown with bush. So, a couple of weeks ago, well, a lot of weeks ago, we started to clear the junction into Shori Village. I asked the members of the community to come together and clear it one Saturday morning. They thought it would have took one Saturday. So we done it for six weeks, and we paused for two weeks just to plant crab night, and the bush out there probably about six feet high again. I simply asking for help just to get the initial bush, the bushing done, clear away the big jungle out there, and then I would maintain it going forward. Yeah? So, that's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good night, Madam PM. <coughs> Good night. Morris Lee is my name. Honored and privileged to be in my alma mater. I used to be the head boy of this school and the cricket captain 150 pounds ago, 42 years ago. <laughs> but you know that they got men bigger than you playing cricket. Yes. So you can still play. I, I will advise them to do what I'm trying to do. Stay out of it. No, calm down, calm down, sir. <laughs> I also want to greet my representative. He doesn't know that we are related before tonight. I don't know if I will live to regret that. But we come from the Goat Hill. He doesn't know where the Goat Hill is. I can tell him where the Goat Hill is after the meeting. That's in St. Simons. I speak to you peacefully tonight, but there are some things that concern me as some person that lived in St. Andrew, born and raised all of my almost 61 years. I might not look no more than 22, but I, I can be 61 just now. I, I, can, I can assure you I have more gray hair than you. Huh? 
I have more gray hair than you. The barber test. The barber has my like gray hair very well for me, ma'am. It's well disguised. <laughs> I want to speak a little bit about transport first as it relates to the fact that every St. Andrew resident in this building has to disembark at the Cheapside Terminal in Bridgetown. For decades, that building, that piece of land deserves some attention. It deserves an upgrade. And for a parish like St. Andrew that has given so much to Barbados, I believe that the people of St. Andrew deserve to have a proper state-of-the-art terminal in Cheapside. We should not have to be running for the rain and borrowing somebody else's toilet when we want to ease ourselves. All right? Now, one of my businesses received the VAT refund last year after eight years of waiting. I want to know if the legislation facilitates me getting interest on that money. If I do all the VAT office, I will have pay interest. The VAT office hold me up for over eight years before they pay me. I won't want to bother to tell you what else to hold up in the country too, under the last government, and okay. nobody ain't make them noise or well, whimper. As I said, I speak peacefully. But, but, I come, but, 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 I ain't come but, to make noise. I, I'm I speaking constructively. And I, I appreciate that. Okay. I want to invite the government to consider maximizing humidity. Humidity, that's why I repeat the word. I hear talk that I don't subscribe to. Where I've heard it several times that Barbados is water scarce. As far as I'm concerned, that's a myth. I don't believe that Barbados is water scarce. We have spent a lot of time drilling down for water, but we, in a parish as green as St. Andrew, there is technology available we, we, where we could pull water from the sky at a rate of almost 20,000 gallons a day with the right equipment. So Barbados should not, we should maximize those opportunities to make sure that people don't suffer for water. And we heard it today several times, even on a daily basis. That should not be something happening in 2023. One of the other observations that I want to draw to your, this, um, uh, draw to your information as well. Last year, there was a broken main coming from the top of the East Coast down to Bell Plain. And because of that main that was broken for several weeks, the people of St. Andrew, especially in these areas down here, Lakes, Bell Plain, Shuri, suffered, had to be fed with water tanks. So you have Lakes Village, you have Bell Plain, you have Shuri Village, all of these districts that represent several thousand people fed by one man coming from St. Joseph. And I believe that if we could tap into water that's available from the air under humid conditions, you could set up a few um, water storage facilities and maybe in the Bell Plain and Walkers and Shuri Village area to be able to reroute some of that water because essentially you have to maximize opportunities, Madam PM, I hope you're listening to me. You have to maximize. Hey, to you. you have to I'm trying to find out where we can have you have an opportunity to speak to Rommel and the water people. Uh, I only need to speak once. Once I speak once, no, no, I don't no, need to no, speak but, a second time. Here you are speaking for audience and us listening. Mm. There you will speak for action and research. Okay. You understand? And I don't believe in idle talk if we can avoid it. I'm now, more than willing the, to make the, myself the, available. The, the problem with the problem, and you're absolutely correct <coughs> that you can generate water from the atmosphere. Correct. But it is energy intensive. It's not straightforward. Not necessarily. And, uh, well, it's energy coming from the sun uh, uh, and the wind. 
Yeah, but is it still capital intensive? Look, look, the PV man. It may be capital well, intensive at the beginning. Yes, but you still have to have money to put in. At the same time, you are looking at a one issue point. They have to look at the fact that St. Lucie getting brown water every day with pipes that got replaced. You heard Carlita talk about the district pipe um, the things that still bursting every day. They have a range of difficulties. Mr. Boyce is here. Mr. Wright is here, Mr. Chairman. You understand? There are a range of problems. So I'm saying not that it can't be done. Mm. And the Deputy Prime Minister is working with people to see what use of technology, cutting edge technology that can be had to minimize our difficulties. Mm. By the same token, we've said to them, do not discount people's concerns about the flow, um, the, the flow into the coast. And we've asked the runoff into the coast. And we have asked Dr. Farrell, David Farrell, to work with the Barbados Water Authority and the ministry. Dr. Farrell is the head of the Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology. In other words, they're the study of water mm. and the atmosphere. So that, believe you me, what I, I want to encourage people with ideas. And I want people, because we don't believe that we have all the knowledge and all the ideas. And when they come, we get them to answer specifically to the various things. Right now, there are studies being done that by the end of the year, we should be able to have a better assessment of all of our water resources underground, and then to be able to look and see where the runoff can happen. Now, that takes time, because they've got, they had to bring in specialized equipment, they've been doing the monitoring, and then they're working with some of the private sector players to do the drilling, to be able to see where else you can get water. So um, suffice it to say that you and your cousin from Go Hill should <laughs> sit down. And He's not as good looking as I am though. That, <laughs> beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> so, but bottom line is that I suspect that you have an interest in talking some cutting edge stuff and where we can find solutions that may be more appropriate to remote areas, we should not exclude them. I want to repeat myself, where we can find solutions that may be cheaper than running long distribution mains, where water can be generated and almost have a mini distribution system in some parts of St. Andrew, also because of the manner in which the land slides and you don't want to have to disrupt the land too much. So I take the point, and I do, however, say that we have to overcome the energy intensity that is necessary. Um, and just to say that it's sun and wind doesn't really underscore how much you have to put out to get it. So we'll look at it. The good news is, is that there's a lot of opportunities globally to be able to look and see how we can get support and solutions for water. And that is what we have been working on. The GCF has given us at least two, two, two um, grants with respect to water. One of them is $80 million and is offsetting a lot of the expenditure that we would otherwise have to pay mm -hmm. from the taxpayers' money in order to do it at the Water Authority. So, Rommel, can I encourage you and Mr. Lee to meet? And, and um, I normally hear you with respect to transport. I ain't get there. I hope to get there you may, You may not get there tonight. <laughs> I know that when you start from that, you got a, a run up that longer than Charlie Griffith one. <laughs> so that that was for you, cause you know Charlie Griffith. A lot of youngsters don't know him. My run up might be like Michael Hall, that one. Oh, very that one. very soft and sleek. <laughs> but why are we talking I, about I, I, what? I, 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 at the time when you were cricket captain? Not now. Yeah, nearly two hundred pounds ago. Yeah. <laughs> why we touch on? The word or the words capital intensive. I listened to the presentations with some disappointment because I'm leaving here tonight very concerned that we have to find over two billion dollars to finance replacing water mains that are in excess. More, more like two and a half to three. Three because billion dollars. By the time dollars. you get to the back end of 10, 15 years, inflation will take what is 2.5 billion today and increase that some. But 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 you have to be realistic too, uh, Morris. 
all these pipes didn't get put down in a year or two. I understand. These, these I know, I know it's over 200 over years. Decades. I know, decades. I know it's, I know it's over but, 200 years. But, but, but in many instances, the absence of maintenance over the years and the inability to replace 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago means that you have an accumulation of problems that you're now facing. At the same time that the world is facing a groundwater crisis. Mm -hmm. So had you been doing it and you didn't have any crisis, you wouldn't feel it. But when you wait to the end and God do it in a hurry, and then at the same time, the water ain't coming, you, got, you get a double whammy. Which brings me to the point, and I, I, I say this with extreme agony, Madam Prime Minister, if we have to find almost $3 billion to refresh and renew and restore the water means, why would the government write off a billion dollars in national insurance money? Because, because Mr. Mr. Um, Lee, who can pay? The who, who, no, 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 stop. Because I want you to pause and stop. And I thank you for the question. Yeah. First of all, where was everybody when the insurance wasn't being paid, the national insurance wasn't being paid? They had Second, who, secondly, where was everybody when we kept saying over and over, Dale, how many times? Week after week after week in the House of Assembly, Santia. Week after week. Mm. About the printing of money. Mm. With a government that didn't even turn around and come with an early election, but wait five years and almost 90 days. And therefore, what we inherited at the end was $1.9 billion in arrears from central government. That had nothing to do with NAS. Now, if we didn't write it off, who in here would have to pay? And across Barbados, is it going to come out of the atmosphere like the atmosphere coming into water? Or are we going to have to find the taxpayers who already were beleaguered and did not have the opportunity to save money for almost the better part of a decade? Now, hindsight is 2020. But let us also deal with the reality that if you didn't restructure the debt, you heard it from us, you heard it from Owen Arthur, you even heard it from David Eswick many a day in the House of Assembly, not true? And what you had to do, because you know that there are people who are asset rich and cash poor. True, true, true. And if you don't restructure your debt when you're asset rich and cash poor, you effectively can become bankrupt. We had 23 downgrades. Now, since this government has come in, the first thing we set about to do, not alone, with the trade union movement, with the social partnership, the private sector, was to restructure the debt, the domestic debt. Since then, in spite of the fact that we restructured the domestic debt, we turned around immediately. And people who had $250,000 and less, we made sure that they could all cash back out their bonds. We excluded the savings bonds from restructuring. Now, I hear all of this talk from a handful of people coming from a certain section of the society. Mm. As if all of a sudden, those who in George Street are lily white and hands clean. Why don't you pay back the debt? You mean the debt that want to lick up? You mean the debt that want to carry right up to the sky? You mean the debt that even if we paid it back and we put a way of putting it on the backs of Bajans today, who are still recovering from a pandemic, that you can only lengthen the lifeline of the NIS scheme by three years? That song like something that any sensible government would do? Let's get real. The reality is that we did what we had to do to stabilize, first and foremost, the dollar. If this dollar was devalued, we inherited a country with less than four weeks foreign exchange. Today we have 37 or 38 weeks of foreign exchange. We inherited four weeks of foreign exchange with a debt payment of 100 million due in two weeks. And when we had to pay that 100 million, your foreign reserves would have come back down to two and a half weeks of import cover. And at the beginning of a hurricane season that did not let us get out of the hurricane season without Tropical Storm Kirk hitting us and creating damage in September three months later. Mr. Lee, please, thank you for raising it. But I, I want us to understand this. The government is the people and taxpayers of this country. And when people say, do not write it off, bring it back, which 
part of St. Andrew residents, what percentage of the 1.3 billion are you all going to pay in one year, two years, three years? Because if we don't understand what we did by using the NIS to be able to support government spending. Every month the last government could not balance its books. Every month the last government had to pay um, more money than it was earning and hence somebody had to print the money. And it was Central Bank and it was NIS. And nobody said anything when we were talking about it. Everybody just was content to let it go along and we came in and mercifully, mercifully, Within one week of coming into office, we said to the IMF and we said to the creditors, we cannot do this. We are choosing to default on the debt because what you are getting, first and foremost, let me remind you, and especially with the external debt, and that is why you had a problem with the last governor of the central bank who became the advisor of the same people who were asking us not to restructure their debt. You cannot pay an excess premium for being a bad risk. And when the risk becomes real and the people can't pay the debt, you don't want to take the cut. It doesn't work that way. You have already been compensated month after month after month by us paying 12 and 13 percent interest rates instead of 7 and 8 percent interest rates because you said we were a bad risk. Well, the bad risk come true to be a real bad risk and the company no more. So let us be very clear about this. I know, and I will talk to the country in a few days' time on the mm -hmm. NAS. I know it is not easy, but I also know it is what it is. And I didn't ask to inherit a government where the government didn't even pay NAS the contributions for a number of years, and it ran up over $250 million. <laughs> this government didn't put money in Apesil. This government didn't put money in Paradise. This government didn't put any in those things that you and others are considering nebulous. And all we have done is to seek to stabilize the system and to do so in circumstances where we say, don't carry people to the end of a precipice and make them fall off and drop down. Do a gentle, 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 gentle something so that you don't even feel it. You remember them fine gauge needles that we had for the vaccines that when the prick you didn't even feel it? Mm. You need a gentle trajectory. And I thank you for doing it because I hear a number of people speaking who ought to know better, but I will speak later this week. Thank you. You're more than welcome. But I haven't been given the opportunity to ask what I consider to be an important question. If you have been at the wicket so long that they thought you asked but, all the questions. But I was a fast bowler, so I, not, not so much a bat. But, but if you're a fast bowler, then you should be out already because you shouldn't <laughs> be batting so long. <laughs> I'm an all-rounder. Anyhow. That money that was due to the NIS, was it due from companies that had assets? And the reason why I asked that question is because I saw in the newspapers the government was threatening to sell properties for people that owed land tax. So, where are these companies that owe the, the government? The NAS may use other mechanisms. The NAS typically may use garnish orders mm -hmm. so that when a check is due to you, mm -hmm. you may not be able to get the full check mm -hmm. because they don't need to be able to go up. Uh, and, 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 and they don't have any charge over properties. So it's not land tax. And that's why I said the but NAS... But they compulsory use, acquisition? No, but you can't. You can't. The NAS is a different entity. Okay. 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 The land tax has the charge on the land and land tax. Anytime you owe land taxes, you cannot convey your land. You have to clear the land taxes before you can give clear title. Mm -hmm. But NIS is not like that. NIS, however, has equally strong powers with respect to the ability to garnish um, uh, uh, um, monies due and owing to people who are in default or who owe significant sums. Okay? Well, but I, but I, I want you to remember... You that the NIS is a tripartite body and mm. this government has held faithful mm. to allowing that tripartite body to operate rather than treating it as a subsidiary of central government mm. that the last government did. The NIS is made up of persons appointed by the government and the last government increased the numbers to give it a majority. It is represented by people from the labor movement 
and it is represented by people from the private sector. Mm. They constitute the NIS. The NIS is not a government department. And that's what makes this whole thing so tragic. Okay? But okay. I give you the assurance that for us to simply say pay back the 1.3 billion, who is going to pay back? Mm. It would have to be the taxpayers. And to make the taxpayers pay back and then only lengthen the life of the fund for three years, when the fundamental problems of the fund are structural. In 2007, the actuary predicted that we would have 30,000 more contributors than we have today by 2020. Mm. Do you know what 30,000 contributors are? And between the numbers of people in the country, that's why when I tell you that the population has actually declined, it is a structural problem. Did Grenada and St. Vincent and Trinidad, did they write off 1.3 billion? Why are they fixing theirs last week in Grenada, mm. in Trinidad? Why is St. Vincent having to fix theirs by the end of the year? Why is almost every developed country social security scheme in trouble? Because the planning that we did and the modeling that we did in the middle of the 20th century has not quite worked out. In Germany, major problems they had because almost all of the developed countries and a large number of the developing countries face the same problem we have, a declining and an aging population. So what you have is people, more people are living longer. Mm. A man before when NIS started in 1967 was expected to live to what, 67 or 68? So that you basically were carrying it for seven or eight years. That man is living now to 78 or so years old. We expect that by the time the pension age is due to go up in six years' time, five years' time, five years' time, mm. and then six after that, that by the time you reach 68 years old to retire in 11 years, not before 11, you know, your life expectancy will probably go as far up as 80, 81, 82. Okay, so it means that you would still be drawing from the public, from the, from the NIS fund for a, almost twice the length of time than you would have been drawing in the 1960s. The other critical thing is, is that they have found that 52% of the people who became eligible for pensions in the year 2000 are still drawing. 52% of the pensioners so that because people are living longer, you're drawing down much, much more by one person living 10, 12, 15, 20 years instead of 7, 8, 9 years. And that is the reality of what we're facing. Now, we can do nothing. That's the truth. Because I will be long gone from public life when this becomes an issue. But it would be irresponsible for us to know that we can take a gentle passage over the next 11 years and leave it for others to come and do as a sudden drop off madam so people like you can start to wonder and everybody under 50 can start to wonder where i can be able to draw a pension in barbados lisa you understand so you have to fix your problems when you know if you wait to solve a problem with diabetes after the toe gone the foot gone and the knee gone but the only thing you can want is the whole leg or sepsis right you can't wait. So thank you for raising it. You're more than and welcome. As I said, I will speak to the country in greater detail without the background yeah. noises here in a school hall. I also want to make, uh, answer a question about the paving of the East Coast Road. Um, at this present moment, it stops abruptly at Barclays Park. And as far as I'm concerned, the East Coast Road is all the way up cattle wash. I think the My road... There, you are a man whose eyes are big and whose pockets must now match his eyes. You understand? Mm. They used to tell us years ago about champagne tastes and mobby pockets. Mm. Remember, this is the same government that you want also to pay $1.3 billion. This is the same government that you want to be able to have an energy-intensive farm to be able to make water. This is the same government. You understand what I'm saying? You want, uh, and I agree with you, that we need a terminal at cheap side. But you can't do everything all the time and all you want. I want enough things too. Everybody in here want enough things too. But you have to do what you can do rather than only being driven by aspirations and wants. All right? when, madam, uh, so I, I hear you. 
And if you see it stop there, mm. it means that at some point a phase two will happen. Mm. Now, the same time we're doing that, what is a worse road than the rest of East Coast Road? Foster Hall to Bath. Foster Hall to Bath cannot take tour buses. And I can't wait for the Complant project to get to Foster Hall from Andromeda to Bath, I think is how it is described in the project. Because that is costing the country significantly by our inability to deal with the significant underwater movement and the buckling of the roads. You feel as though you're in Disneyland. Mm. It's the closest thing. So I hear you. I want to work with you. But mm. equally, you heard me talk earlier about people increasing how we work so that we can continue to push growth in this country. You cannot survive unless we push growth. And these are the conversations that we need to have. We had two to three years of minimal activity during COVID. It's almost like if we have to ramp up, double up, treble up, and catch back up for all that we lost. I just want to make two points about transport before I take my seat. Morris, Morris, I got to insist now that there's still how many other speakers? No, there can't be still 11 speakers. It is now 10 o'clock. And with all due respect, the public servants have to be able to go to work tomorrow. Mm. So we've been more than tolerant. I know that you know that is true. Yeah. Let somebody else come and let's go through. We've addressed, and I'm going to insist now that if you're asking us to address an issue that's been addressed already, I'm asking you to take note of it and let us address new issues now. All right? Okay. okay. So don't, don't sweat. We no, just no I'll, make, I'll make room for somebody else. Thank you, love. All right. Take care. Who's next? Good evening to all. My name is Nicole Maynard. I have two issues. One, sanitation. Um, they pick up the garbage, and if your garbage can that was supplied by sanitation is full, being St. Andrew is cooked, so that can can hold everything for three weeks. They leave the garbage in the other can that they have been picking up for God knows how long. We're going to arrange for SSA to come down and have a special session, Rommel with you and the residents of St. Andrew. Because there are too many complaints about garbage collection in a way that I have not heard for a number of months across the country. So believe you me, I hear you. What district you were talking about? East Coast Road. East Coast Road. So can we please, um, the minister is not here, but we will make the contact with the general manager of the SSA and Rommel for you to come down and arrange a mutually convenient time for you all to meet with the residents of St. Andrew and find out what's really going on with the garbage collection. Thank okay. you. The last question is for transport. Why does it take 45 minutes for the bus driver to get from Shore Village to Belle Plain? I don't know. Can I help you? Um, Sandy? Ms. Holder? I'll investigate it, Madam PM, because it doesn't make sense to me either. Ms. Maynard, thank you for raising it, and we'll have it investigated. But is this a typical thing, or is it a one-off? 45 minutes from Shorey Village to Belle Plain. So we're to stop in St. Andrew Parish Church. Where does stopping in St. Andrew Parish Church? Uh, the Shorey Village bus stops in Shorey Village. Okay. I understand. I don't know why it takes so long for them to get back this side. No problem. I hear you. As has Miss Holder. Good night. Madam Prime Minister, name, head sir? table. My name is Henderson Mears. I live right here in Bad Plain. Um, as a matter of fact, you may have visited my house. Is the White House down the street? White House. I, I, rem I remember, sir. You remember? I remember. There you go. Um, 
I'm a returning national. I've been gone for quite a few years, but the years that I've been gone, I've spent over 30 years working for the United States Army as well as the Army and as a civilian. My concern here tonight is Franklin Road. Everybody talk about roads and bridges. I am addressing Franklin Road. Since 2005, that was when I started building my house down the street directly across from Franklin Road. I was told by the then representative, his hands are tied, and he showed me my hands are tied. Hands are still tied today. I look out my window two days ago, and I saw the fraud, waste, and abuse coming down that water. Marl, great sand, name it. To this day, if you don't have a four-wheel drive, you cannot get up Franklin Road. All right? We need to do something about Franklin Road. Okay. Um, could you hold on a minute? Um, Mr. Say again? Um, Yearwood is behind you from drainage. Henderson Merritt. Mr. Yearwood? He's not the drainage. Mr. No, Mr. Yearwood. He's not drainage. Not, not Mr. Merritt. Oh, yes, the head of the drainage unit. I hate to put you on the spot, bro. No, no. Let's speak to it. Just Franklin Road. Road. Let, me, let me address it. The, it has to do with the, what, taking the water off the road, but I'm not, I know Franklin Road, but I'm not aware of the watershed, the area that lead to it. So we'll have to look at it and see how we can get water diverted from the road into... But clearly, the road, the, clearly the water coming down the is road. making the road incapable of being used because it's eroding the road. Yes. But water is eroding the road, so the water has to be coming from somewhere. So, Indeed. What so, I'm saying, so I'm can not we aware. agree that you are going to go and investigate yes. and also meet with Mr. Mears? His house is right opposite Franklin Road. So yeah. when you go, you don't even have to pass go. Yep. You can literally go and see him afterwards. Okay. And then Rommel, obviously, no. without fixing the problem with the water coming down, any repairs to the road will only be temporary. Hey. temporary Let me just address the, the Dudley Road before we go any further. That road is one of the roads that was on the schedule to be done, and it's going to be done this year. The not, first step... Not until the June no, let me, it let me needs to be done next week. The first step in, in repairing the Franklin Douglas Road was the change out of the main. The, one of the issues with Franklin Douglas Road was that the main was bursting all the time. So we had to change out the main. So the road is now in a, a, a worse condition because we had to excavate the entire stretch of the road to change out the main on the left-hand side. Now, the BWA is still working on a section, I think it's a valve that they're, that they're working on, they're doing some concrete work on that road. As soon as that concrete work is complete, I've spoken to BWA and, and MTW, and we will, we will pave that road. A lot of the... Still let them check and make sure there's no other water coming, and that it's not just an issue of a burst main. Because the one thing I don't want us to be doing is spending good money after bad. And, and there, let's just pause and do it. And I'm reading Mr. Mears' body language as you are speaking. So let Mr. Yearwood go up there in addition to the Water Authority. And let everybody have a coordinated reproach before you are ready to pave. And it's under what? CAF? Or, or, or MTW? This Scotland District. This Scotland District. Yeah. Compliant. But it will not. It's going to happen. But we also need to make sure that we get Andromeda to Foster Hall in. So I am fooling the body. I, you understand? I am fooling this body. So it will happen, but you may have to give us a little time, sir. Yeah. 18 years since they won our, the supervisors have retired. I, I can assure you it won't, Next, be 18, it won't be 18 years at all. Knowing you, right? <laughs> now, my next thing. There's a culvert as you come off of Franklin Road onto the main road, which is very, very dangerous. I personally drew it to the attention 
of the local MCW guys. You can sit in here. We at where a pedestrian actually fell into the culvert and busted his face. And they promised to put up some type of rail so that it won't happen again. That has not occurred. That's priority. We're looking at safety for pedestrians. We're looking at safety for them school kids. And we need to complete that side of the sidewalk going to Ada Costa. Somebody alluded to that earlier tonight. So MCW needs to get on the ball. I can tell you a wrong long okay, call it MCW. Yeah. You call it when it used to be Ministry of Communication and Works. So I know you've been a wrong long thing. Otherwise, Romel in trouble. They coming. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? That's it. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sorry. My name is Michelle Springer. Good evening to the panel, Minister Motley, Minister Romel, and Deputy Prime Minister. Um. Oh. Uh, couple of things. I know that the discussion this evening has been about the roadworks, the infrastructure. And one thing that I wanted to say, I know we don't have a community center and I really wanted to put that uh, to the table. The reason for this is that we have two schools in St. Andrew. And with respect to the development of the creative art, like performing the performing arts or for skills there is no availability of space for our children to be able to express themselves and the development of that I think is necessary within our space it's not that we can travel to town easily or travel wherever easily we do, have the do you have easy. access to this school excuse me we do have you have access to this school to well, be able to use it to do any performing arts or anything and, to this and hall. To, and to be able to... Mm. Uh, this this to, hall needs serious work. Yes. And, and it's not just this hall. Part and parcel of the education transformation is going to require significant sums of money in a number of schools. I've already started to pass money to the Ministry of Education for a number of the newer secondary schools. But this one is one of the ones that also needs work. You only have to look at it and see. Yes. And in its modernization, one of the difficulties is clear the acoustics in here as well. Because Correct. the acoustics, my throat is feeling strained even though I have a mic. Might, yes. And I have this in a few halls that I dread going in. Dighton Griffith, don't want to out there because <laughs> yeah, you're in trouble. Um, Frederick Smith Hall, same thing again. And if you look at a number of these schools, they were built with the same plan by the World Bank and other ones, particularly the newer secondary schools. And they're all, because they had this view that you use cement because it's less maintenance, they're dark, they're dreary, they're dismal, and they do not encourage people to, to, to learn, quite frankly, insufficient. You need light, you need air, you need the ability for sound to be heard and carried properly. All of those things make a difference. Now, I keep making the point that this country doesn't have all that it would like, and therefore we have to prioritize. St. Lucie, for example, has a wonderful new hall at a great, um, Darrell Jordan Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Lodge School has a new hall. Um, Grant Lee Adams Hall needs work. Aline Schools Hall needs work. A number of Parkinson, um, a number of the other newer secondary, Princess Margaret needs work. So we are getting ready to roll out programs over the next two, three years to reach as many of our schools to start to modernize a lot of the facilities. In doing so, mm -hmm. instead of having to build separate community centers each time, right. we then make these facilities available to people after school, on weekends, and throughout the vacation. And that way we get the best use of a facility and government's investment. Make sense? It makes sense, and no. I hope that you remember us. No, I, I ain't forgetting you. Oh, okay. And there may be some opportunities to work with churches, because in other parts of the... The problem in, in rural areas is because you have discrete districts that are cut off, 
you may want in some instance to work not just with schools but churches that may have a space mm -hmm. and the government is prepared to work in some instances with churches if they are building out spaces that can be of benefit to the community as well because it means then that we don't have the obligation to build that same facility from scratch if we work with a partner in a community that's cut off. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? It does. Thank you. Um, the other thing is the polyclinic. Um, we would like to, well, I'm hoping that there would be some discussion so that there is at least one dental health day. Dental health day um, at the polyclinics here in St. Andrew. I think the issue with dental health has to do, and I just approved some dental auxiliaries, some additional dental, some posts to bring in people affected with locums. Part of the difficulty is that I believe the course that was offered in Jamaica mm -hmm. stopped being offered a little bit, a little while ago, and it has therefore led to a reduction in the number of personnel. So the government is looking, the Ministry of Health is looking to engage dentists to be able to help us deliver the services in particular where there's an absence. But there's a dentist to the left of me who can speak <laughs> to these things better than me. So, yes. Um, there's definitely a shortage of people in the profession, both the auxiliaries, the therapists, and the dental surgeons, and the oral surgeons, by the way. And, there's, and what we're trying to do is to encourage more people to get trained and to be able to come back and provide their services, and also to up out the number of dentists providing volunteer or give back services to the communities. And that's what we're encouraging, and we're getting a good response from that. So I think with the approval of the new post as well, the Prime Minister just spoke about, we'd be able to expand all the services that are provided. But it can't be provided at the polyclinic without the appropriate equipment. And that's the thing then they would have to do to be able to get the equipment in, because as you would appreciate, it's a specialized field that needs certain equipment to be able to provide these services. But we take the point. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And finally... Are there any dental offices at all in St. Andrew? I... Okay, so that there is a case then for us to be able to put some dental equipment down here at Bell Plain to be able to assist yes, and we'll yes. make a note, Ramel, of that going forward with the Ministry of Health. Okay. Um, and the, the last set that we got at Warren's, by the way, mm -hmm. when we first came into office was a donation from the Barbados International Business Association. So there have been a lot of philanthropic donations too. Oh, okay. So we can look and see how we can deal with it. Okay. And finally, um, I'm from Babylon Road, St. Andrew, and I would also like to table that our road also needs to be fixed, and the drainage in the area also needs to be um, looked at. When it's rainy, it kind of floods. The drainage needs to be sorted in that area as well. Babylon Road, St. Andrew. Has Mr. Yearwood heard you, Mr. Yearwood? Um, I know that you weren't listening just now. So I know that Mr. Mears was keeping you occupied, but Babylon Road is also calling up for some drainage resolution issues. Babylon Road, you're aware of any or you need to visit? Babylon is only going through um, in front of school. Yes. Right. I'm aware of a water course that goes um, towards Red, Redmond Road. Towards Redmond Road. I'm aware of a, small, a water course, that only one that goes from Redmond Road to, across Redmond Road towards the, um, the water course by the, the bridge before the church. But I, I have the exact location to find where it is. I have, I have to assume what you said. I didn't hear you, but please go and visit. It's okay. The hour is late. Please yeah. go and visit. Okay. okay? Thank you. And so on that, yes, go ahead. They have two roads that have acts. If anything else, there are two roads, Coggins Hill and Babylon Road, that I must see completed in this program. Babylon Road and Coggins Hill, those two. So rest assured that your road will be, will be, will be addressed and, very, and the drainage issue. Very much appreciated, MP. And the, the grass in the gutters? And the grass in the gutters, yes. That's the last point. Thank you. I want to assure you too that even though he wants it done, it may not be done in this fiscal year. 
I'm financial, and I've learned long enough to be able to moderate expectations. So if they're on this year, they'll be done. If not, we'll try to get them done in the next financial year. But suffice it to say, it is on the radar of the MP. And once it's on the radar of the MP, it will get into the planning cycle in the ministry and get it done. But I want to remind us that roads across Barbados all have to be done as well too. Okay? Um, another point before I go is the um, by the primary school. There are some mulch trees. One of them Talking to the mic, uh, Michelle. Mm. There are some mulch trees over by the St. The Ada Costa Edwards Primary School. Uh, I think one of them fell, or a part of one of them fell, and that is obviously a dangerous situation for children, adults, or anybody. So um, in that area, we would like to request that some attention is paid to those trees and that the gutters also are cleared in that area, if, if possible. And I'll ask for proper pruning. Because what I saw happen at the playing field here in um, Belle Plain, I called Rommel a week ago asking who butchered. Because those trees were not pruned. Those trees were butchered and possibly killed. Uh, it is an act against everything that we stand in for to be able to get more trees to make this world more palatable for us to live in. Yes. And Santi, I thank you for raising the issue of tree trimming and tree pruning earlier this year, but clearly we're going to have to continue the classes across Barbados um, to make sure that people don't kill. Those trees take decades to get out of that high. And for people to just go and butcher them by cutting them across, like if you're cutting a piece of wood to be able to use in a carpentry shop mm -hmm. is not what is, is required. And the irony is that we have laws that prevent the cutting down of trees and that make it a criminal offense to do so without the appropriate permission of the town planner. So, okay, my you. final point is this. Sorry, but my final, final point. Um, St. Andrew, we really would like to see some development in our area. Currently, the St. Andrew PIC is trying to do a lot of work in terms of, you know, making, bringing that camaraderie uh, community spirit. And so I would like to beg um, PM that in your next estimates <laughs> that you give some favor to the PICs overall so that they can do the work that they have to do because it takes some finances. So please consider it when you're cutting that you, you know. There's the Parish get, Independence Committee. I have a past um, chair person. That's what you meant, a parish yes, independence Spend committee. Yes, parish independence committee, correct. Yeah, so, yeah. If, if we don't get back there in one swoop, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> All right, thank you thank so you very though, much. But I hear that you are so successful. I had people telling me from all over St. Michael, Christchurch, St. Philip, that correct. they came to the crab night so, last Friday night. So keep so, them keep But, 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 but Rommel has not told you that I have been working quietly with him and Indar to get Bordens going so that we can have the fishing night for families Ooh. launched before the next, next independence. Sure, sure. So you will hear just like people come down to Oysters on a Friday night or a Saturday night. Excellent. We want to hear that people coming up to Bordens to do fishing and to have a relaxing evening Excellent. separate from the crabbing down here by Belle Blaine and Longbourn. Thank you so very much. Thank you, my dear. We're finished? Protocol being established, good evening one and all. My name is Eglin Murphy and I am a resident of Shorey Village in St. Andrew. I am going to try to be as brief as possible. Madam Prime Minister, I agree with Carlitha. You need to come into St. Andrew unannounced. I, I do that all the time. No, you, you no, really do. No, no, you do. really need to I do. surprise. That, that's why, that's why I could tell you about the people taking water unauthorized. And that's why I could tell you about the tree that get butchered. And I call Rommel. And that's why I call and complain about the East Coast Road and the six inch thing. All I hear from you, I start to complain about already because it is wrong. 
and the length of time taken to do the East Coast Road is wrong. I want to say thank you for our new road in Shuri Village in St. Andrew. However, the tenantry roads are deplorable. Savannah Road has gotten to the point where the residents are looking for rocks to put in craters, not potholes, any longer. Shuri Tenantry Road is the same thing. You need to take a drive through Shuri Village up Morgan Lewis and make the right turn to go to Boss Cabell in St. Andrew. Two vehicles cannot travel on that road because the bush has reduced it to just one lane. So the bush needs cutting. And the craters in the road, it is like you're driving on an obstacle course. You shun one hole, you drop into another one. Part of the road is sinking. And it's a beautiful place to drive because you can look right over Morgan Lewis Beach. But it's deplorable. I, I hear you. I had the unfortunate pleasure, I should say, I have to say pleasure, of meeting a water authority truck coming through that area on Sunday. And I had to reverse all the way back to the top of Morgan Lewis so that that truck could come through. Something needs to be done. Listen, I have learned that sometimes it's better to keep quiet. But I can assure you that it is not by accident that almost every complaint in this hall tonight comes as a result of the depot in St. Andrew. <laughs> I can pick sense and I can read. And that's all I got to say tonight. Not a word more, not a word less. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, I also want to say thank you to Chetwin Ramsey for taking the initiative to clear the corner of Greenland Bridge and Shuri Village because that was a disaster waiting to happen. Um, back in 2018, the then minister, John King, took the initiative to clear the Conrad Hunt Sports Club from the bush and the trees that surrounded it. That pavilion is a disgrace to the name it bears. Back on election day, I unfortunately fell while working with EBC and fractured my right ankle. To this day, I am still waiting for a resolution on that matter. You can meet with her after. The, the bush. I don't, I, don't, I don't want you to discuss it. Right. I'm not going to go any further. I'm so not going to go any further on that. The AG and you can talk shortly because well, we're going to end up. Why shortly. I brought it up is so that you will know something needs to be done about the Conrad Hunt Sports Club. It is deplorable. The bush around it needs to be cleared. Where when you're traveling, coming from Dog Lane or from Greenland, you can have a clear view of the pasture. That was done back in 2018. We are now in 2023. Nothing has been done since then to that pasture. Another thing, do we still have health inspectors? Because the last time I saw a health inspector in Shuri Village was two years ago. I'm not going to get into the gutters because someone already mentioned that. But I take it upon myself to come out with my hoe and shovel and I clear the gutters in front of my home so that the mosquitoes would not eat us alive. The gutters are deplorable. The water is settling and it smells. From where I live, you can smell the water all the way from the top by the savannah because the gutters are blocked. Something needs to be done. And I'm just begging for some of the bush. I, I hear you completely. And as I said, less I say tonight, right. the better. Also, okay? Suffice it to say that St. Andrew has a depot 
with 27 workers, four trucks, and one skid steer. You understand? Two dump trucks and two flatbeds and one skid steer and 27 workers. The less I say tonight, the better. What I have noticed too, Madam PM, is that when they do cut the bush and the trees and everything, they leave everything at the side of the road. Therefore, when the rain falls, it all gets washed back into back the gutter in. and we end up with flooding. We never had flooding down Greenland. We never, I grew up in Shuri Village and we never had flooding coming up Greenland until recently. Why? Because when the grass in the bush gets cut, it stays at the side of the road, and when it rains, everything goes back into the drains. So I'm appe appealing for help in getting the Conrad Hunt Sports Club sorted. Um, as I said, it was 2018 when all the trees were cut down, and it was a beautiful place to be. Um, I think a couple of years ago, they brought in a contractor to kind of rebuild it, but the pavilion is a dry weather pavilion. Is the pavilion built by government or was built by a sports club? Because I really don't know. I, to be honest with you, I'm I not, don't worry. I'm I'll not find positive out. on I'll that. I'll find out from the Ministry of Sports tomorrow. I'm not Ms. positive Bascom, on that. Ms. do you know? Whether the pavilion falls under the jurisdiction of the sports council or is it a private club? I mean, when you look at isolation ground, <laughs> it's almost a tale of two grounds, just as you had a tale of two cities. It's sad. I passed isolation ground tonight and saw some men playing cricket, and it was the most splendid sight to see. Thank you. And, and I want to salute the young man. What's his name again? Who does all the work? Right Lord here. bless you, man. Come, let me get a hug. <laughs> Come, let me get a hug before the end of the night, because people like you deserve to be saluted in this country. And trust me, we would be happy to see Conrad Hunt. To use him as an example, because day in, day out, he volunteers his time to make sure that that ground is the most beautiful ground in the entire Caribbean yes. for cricket. Yes. And, and, yes. and I don't need to tell you that public recognition must come. Yes. And I'm not going to really get into my pet peeve, which is transportation for special needs. We'll talk about that another time. Thank you for your time. I can give you the assurance that only yesterday, Cabinet was in a special session, and that issue of transportation for special needs came up with the DPM and the Ministry of Education. Okay? Thank you. Good night. My name is Heather Von Waltz. I'm from Chalky Mount. Good night to the panel, Madam P. My query tonight is Chalky Mount. Everybody talking about Shuri, Babylon, but Chalky Mount also need to be fixed because we got some roads right now that, I mean, when you're driving, the vehicle going pan size, so you don't know if you're going any gully or what part you're going from there. Another thing too is like water authorities. I have a pipe down with me from since last month. I spoke to Mr. Spray about this. I even sent him pictures where they came, fixed the pipe, and then with, by the next day, we're going back to the same problem, whereas it start to carry moss. Because of where it is situated, I on the hill, so my water flow is very poor. The water not flowing, the way it should flow to come up the hill. Another thing, we talk about buses. I ain't hearing a boy from Chalk. I say, we can't get the bus nor nothing. But one of the things that I spoke to Mr. Springer about, we used to get a bus coming from Princess Alice Bus Terminal, coming to Chalky Mount. We don't get our bus no more. But the bus system from the Fair Trade Street bus stand to Chalky Mount, so you waiting three hours and 40 minutes for a bus to come to Chalky Mount. Last week or week before I was in the bus stand, 
And I can't get in a bus, I pick up the phone, I call Mrs. Springer, because I want the phone already going on. Mrs. Springer told me, all right, give me a couple of minutes so I may get back to you. By the time that he get back to me, I see a bus turn up, I get. The system is very stink and chalky mount. You work, you stand up there for three hours for a bus and can't get none. Another thing? I, th I think that I earlier tonight committed. I said it with respect to some. I want the report for all transport into St. Andrew. I've heard it. We've heard it from every speaker. And we will look at it. And if there is an inappropriate deployment with some routes carrying one and two passengers and other routes needing and overloaded, we are going to deal with it. And Ms. Holder has heard you directly. We may have to think outside of the box, as I said, and look and see how we can meet the demand, but it must be met. Madam okay. Prime Minister, I can tell you this for sure. Two weeks ago, I was inside the bus stand waiting on a bus. The last bus that left the bus stand was 5.30 Chalky Mount. The next bus was supposed to be 7.30 Chalky Mount. We, had, we didn't have that bus. One tap man asked the supervisor to send him to Chalky Mount. The supervisor sent him to Sugar Hill. And then turned around and sent another Zazar to Sugar Hill behind that van. We had to wait until 9.30 to get home that night, which is ridiculous. I spoke to Mr. Spring about it. I called him and I told him about it. Another thing, the school bus on mornings. You got the aid, the cost the errors, and you got the Allen School. You send a 730 bus to chalk him up with the aid, the cost the errors, and the Allen School children. And that bus got to come down Cogan said with those children run packed inside the bus. If something happened, come in Cogan Hill, what will happen to those children? I took many pictures. I sent to Mr. Springer, and Mr. Springer said he would send it to Ms. Bradshaw. I have not heard or hear anything about what will be done about it. I hear you. I've told you that we will have a special review, and I'm expecting to get weekly reports, and we will find out whether, because... All I'm hearing you saying is that half the problem also is the allocation of buses by supervisors in the terminal. That's what you're complaining about over and over. I, now, I can't tell you whether that's the case or not, but by the time we get the reports, the DPM has heard, the, min, um, the part of the secretary has heard, and we will delve into it. I give you that assurance, because what I'm hearing is not acceptable. Madam Prime Minister, I understand where you are coming from. But we will look forward to it. I give you that assurance over the next three months, we are going to review it. Okay? And make sure it gets to work. I will know whether it gets to work or not because I live in the turning point of where the bus will turn. So I have to see for myself. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Blessed night. Greetings to the panel, Madam PM, Ramel Springer, and Deputy PM, Santia Bradshaw, and Mr. Dugit. Antonio, you are speaking. Just on behalf of the residents of King Street, St. Simons, we really got a field road project. I ain't know what, if you What's see. the name again, sir? Antonio Yard. Antonio? Yard. Yard? Yes, please. Okay. And you're talking on behalf of the residents of St. Simons. King Simon. Street, St. Simons. We got a fair road project up there. And we ain't getting the help up in there. You spoke about local knowledge and what's not. One thing the local residents did, the road, it lasts longer than a complaint, the Chinese do it. And now we here again back at the same situation with the road going back down the road again and all we're seeing is moral coming all the time and every time the moral come 
the road sinking. So why would you put money into a sinking road all the time? But every day the Chinese come in and they're just putting more up on the road all the time. So all we want to know is who can be accountable for this field project up there? That's all we asking. And we asking that you could come and visit it because for sure Santia Bradshaw has come and seen it. And I don't think since she left, I don't I don't think then that's happened different since everything that happened with Mel always there, he's do he best. But we need some solutions to how best to fix this failing project. I don't know who's the engineers. Yeah. Right, Mr. Pandor, who is the engineer on the project, he can give you some insights as to where we are and some of the solutions that we have come up with to address that road. I, I think he should tell me that he's failing. Yeah, good evening, Madam Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Pandor. Members of the head table, Abdul Pandor. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, at King's Village, King Street. King Street, sorry, we are the supervising engineer. We are not the design engineers. The design engineers are compliant. We review the design and we look after and make sure the work is carried out according to design. We admit that there is a problem at King Street. We saw that the catch pit on the western side has sink. When we saw that, there's no point when you have an engineering problem to panic. You have to assess it properly. What we did, we took levers on the catch pit and on the gabions for the past four weeks. We now have that from compliant, and we are analyzing that. We are meeting on Thursday at three o'clock. You're welcome to come up there as well. To go through the, the compliant has sent, we have asked compliant that you have a problem. How are you going to address it? They have sent in what is called a meta statement of how to do, how they propose to rectify the problem. We have looked at it. We don't agree to everything. So we are meeting there Thursday to address the issue. We are sure we, are we, we have to find why the problem exists. There's no sense in going blindly and just try to fix it or to print. You talk about the marfil going in. In fairness to Complan, what they were trying to do is when the water goes in that hole, they try to put marfil to minimize the water from going in. So you will get less settlement at the time. Also, recently you saw they put some tarpaulin. That was to stop the water from going in. But that, just at, this, at the moment. So until Thursday, we will review, we will review the, we have our own ideas. They have their own ideas. We will discuss them together and come up with a solution of how to deal with the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mm -hmm. Yard, I would suggest, I am not an engineer. You have local knowledge. But even with local knowledge, and even with me as Prime Minister, the one thing I know is that we have to give the engineers, both the design engineers and the supervising engineers, the opportunity to meet and tell us, because I have listened to Mr. Pando very carefully, and I can't tell you what the problem is yet. I know that there's a problem, and therefore I am prepared, because this is what they are paid to do, to be able to do their work, find out the source of the problem, and find a solution for it. And in the circumstances, if there is a problem that is so grave that there is no potential solution, then I expect them to tell us that. 
if there is a solution, but the solution is so costly that we need to do a cost-benefit analysis to be able to determine whether it's worth it, I expect them to tell us that too. So suffice it to say that the one thing I've learned is to stand back and to allow the professionals to be able to have the first option. After they have it, I will come in and you will come in and all of the rest of us will come in and cross-examine. But what I will not do is to be able to pass judgment without an understanding of the nature of the problem and what they're recommending. And if there is a disagreement between the design engineers and the supervising engineers, there is always the capacity to bring other engineers to peer review what is being recommended and for us ultimately to make a decision. Okay, look, we are, we are dealing with geology that clearly is very, very challenging in St. Andrew. And I'm sorry, Mr. Lord isn't here tonight, is he? Raymond Lord? No. The last occasion on which we were down there, Mr. Lord reminded us of the difficulties with respect to where exactly we put housing in this country, um, in this parish in particular, and how we deal with the, dis the, the disposal of wastewater to ensure that we don't have these further problems. Now, I accept that people have been living in circumstances before where the level of slippage may not even have been as great as it is today. But that is also because you have more waterborne facilities today than you may have had in the past before too. So, please. Madam, Madam PM, what got me confused? Sorry? The, what are you confused is... Hold the mic up, Skipper, because for some reason... What are you confused is... about? He telling me that the Chinese do the designs, but yet still hearing that being just so do the designs. This is what I'm saying. My understanding of it is that Complant does the designs, but the government has advised, has sorry, has its own advisors, and that is why Mr. Pandor is the supervising engineer, so that he can pass judgment on what is being done. And if there are issues, he will tell the minister and the CTO, chief technical officer, and then they are duty bound to act to protect the public interest. Right, now, I can't operate on rumor and say so. Correct. All right, but ma'am, what we try to find, what we would also like to find out is if at any time that the soil conservation unit was involved in the Gabian work. At King Street, St. Simon, saying they got the expertise and the experience knowing the Scotland district. That's all they're trying to find out. And if there was ever uh, uh, involved. Mr. Pandor and Complant would have to advise and to answer your question, Mr. Pandor. Yes. And before you do, the AG has confirmed that everything that I just told you is exactly as how it is written in the contract. Yes. Okay? Um, just yeah. I would add that the. And also, when the Complant do their designs, at each level, the topographical survey, the condition survey, the preliminary design, and then the final design, they pass it on to the team and we review it and make any comments as well. Now, as far as the soil conservation, when we took over a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we called in the soil conservation and they came in and they're advising us. In fact, it was the, it was the soil conservation who said to run the water to the western end. And we were thinking that you should run it to the eastern end, but they advised that they had some work already committed, already completed to take the discharge down to the western end. So my answer, yes, we're dealing with the soil conservation. In fact, they do attend the meetings on Monday as well that we have. So in regards to even piping the gabions. The soil conservation never met a contribution towards piping the gabions at the bottom to reduce the water, to lead the water off from where it is now, or this is that you only know coming last week. No, no, no I came in about three, about three months. But they're advising, we, we, are working with, we are working with soil conservation for the downstream runoff. And they've advised us what to do with that section. So yes, soil conservation is deeply involved. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. If I can just weigh in as well, Tony, because the 
the issue with the Gabians, I just want it to be clear that the MTW also had trained persons to do Gabian work. Now, I think it was about 24 persons that we had trained. Some of those persons off of those Gabian teams have been engaged by the, the complaint team to work within King Street and across the, the, the entire Scotland district. Um, and so I think while you're saying uh, has soil conservation been involved, I want to make the point as well that soil conservation is part of a weekly meeting that we hold with the supervisory consultants, with the complaint team, with the National Housing Corporation, who obviously addresses the relocation issues in relation to residents. Um, we have the communications team here. Communication is involved in that meeting. MTW staff are involved in that meeting. Um, if there are issues with the utilities, they are also a part of that meeting as well. So to, I just want to be clear that all of the parties who need to weigh in at any point in terms of the designs or any challenges that are taking place in the Scotland district, that it is, it is an all-of-entity approach towards this project. The other thing is that, and I don't think that's been said, that there has been failures in the Scotland district, in particular in King Street before. So this is not the first time in King Street that we've had some problems, if we are honest. And I think that what we are seeing here, as PM said, is that with climate change, we are obviously getting more intense rainfall, which is impacting the, the shifting of the soil as well. And it is obviously making it more difficult for the technical people to have to design and redesign what is necessary in order to salvage an entire community. The fact that this administration has kept its commitment to even the residents in White Hill should tell you that the people of King Street are not going to be forgotten. We are working to try to find the solutions on a daily basis to make sure that people can remain if they can where they are, but we are also quick enough to make a decision if we feel that people have to be relocated. So I understand the concerns, but I want you to be assured that the entire team is working together to find the solutions as well, Tony. Hey, thank you, ma'am. But my point is, if somebody feel before would a sensible government come in and do the same thing that the last one do and feel? And my think, I mean like running the water the same way if it feel before and in a sense doing it again for it to feel again? Mr. Yard, I hear you, but I can't tell you what the last government do, but I can also tell you that we can cross-examine everybody once we have all the information. I also want to tell you that sometimes people can do the same thing but do it differently. Because both us and the last government was in office and we treat the people money much, much, much differently. So I understand that. But believe you me, I think Santia's point has to be reinforced. Carlita and the others know that we have not left them abandoned in White Hill and that the fact that the work has taken longer than we would have liked None of us had control over a pandemic that took literally almost three years from the life of this government. This government has been in office five years and two months. Of that five years and two months, the pandemic took up three years. The first 19 months was debt restructuring that Mr. Lee and I just talked about earlier tonight. So when you really study it, we have only had about 10, 11 months, if so much, to be able to have a clear pathway to dealing with a lot of these issues. And you heard me talk about the hold-up with a lot of the materials. The gentleman who came here, the tall gentleman who do the crabbing, and um, Marcus, he made the point he want to know when the Gabion program start back. What did the DPM have to tell him? She had to tell him that we were having problems getting the Gabions, and we had problems also with other things. So that, believe you me, I feel the pain. We are going to hear. Let us see what Mr. Pandor and Complaint Group report back to the ministry by next week. If they're meeting Thursday, I would expect that by Monday, Tuesday, the DPM will have a report in our hand and that we will review. If, as she said, there's a need to relocate, we will relocate. That's how the meeting started tonight. If, however, we can fix it and remember there are other engineering solutions that may be available globally that we're not looking at. Mr. Pandor, I'll tell you about his son. His son is a top-class engineer, not in Barbados, but globally. I like, huh? I like your son has won international awards, not true? So don't, don't be shy and bashful about it. You understand? And equally, Complant has access to other engineering skills in China 
where they have conditions as challenging or worse than this. So I haven't given up hope yet. Let us bring everybody to the table. But as I said, you and I can't go before the engineers. Let the engineers see what they agree on, see what they don't agree on. If we have to have peer review, and at the end of the day, if we have to do cost-benefit analysis, because as you say sometimes, it don't make no sense pouring good money after bad. Okay? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, but my brother. For me, you gotta be on the ground and see for where and be a foot soldier like Ho Santi and the Melis be foot soldiers. And we want you at the P and M bar. I now we in. want you to come and see it for yourself. I come in and see King's Village myself. King Street. King Street myself, Not the one sorry. in town. I only talk about King's Village. The special Village. one. This is a special you, one. You know why I talk about King's Village? Because he said Mr. Pandora come from town and call it at the top. <laughs> right. So thank, he's from town. Thank you all. Everybody be safe. Unless Lord the Lord you. build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Unless Always. the watchman watch over the city, we don't know what's going to happen then. Always. Thank you. Sorry for interrupting the meeting, but speaking on the same as that topic that my brother was just speaking on, right? One of the things that he was speaking about was the gear blends and what's not. And Santia was saying that the NTW also deal with that as well. But what I'm looking at is the water needs to be trapped on the water. And that's where you saw it specialized, right? Another thing that I'm looking at as well is they divert all the water to the same area where it's pulling and slipping. If you watch Wait, 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 come along the hill. You will see that the water is diverted by a hump in the road to the same area, which before the water never used to flow that way, right? It always used to go up on the above side, up on the below side, where the soil conservation also have gear blends set up, right? And the water is tapped, and out that side is not pulling. So that's the point that I just wanted to explain so you all have a greater picture of what is really going on. Absolutely, and I hope that both sets of engineers have heard, and when they come on Thursday, that Mr. Panda, you all will also consult with the residents and look at where the water is pulling, as he just indicated, with respect to the hump and going to undermine further the area. Uh, good evening to the panel. My name is Joycelyn Aline Brown. I live in Rock Hall. Ma'am, recorded back there because I don't want, at the end of the day, for us to hear you and then we don't have a record of you. So if you haven't, I would like to urge you to do that and we can see you because at this point in time... Ma'am, it will be just... The last okay. The last Madam let's PM, go just too I'm short. I'm just telling you just short because it's almost 11 o'clock and I don't want to keep the public Understood. office. This is the latest we've ever gone. I'm not, I came late, so I'm not sure if anyone spoke on behalf of the people in Rahal St. Andrew. But um, a couple of years ago, our recreation facility was torn down. We do not know, I, I, well, I do not know if anyone had any reason, but it was, it was demolished and nothing was said. What was torn down? Our recreation facility in the, in the district. So I spoke to you, Mr. Springer, and he, he reassured me that something would be done. So I'm comfortable because I've learned to trust you. Um, one other thing is the road. Everybody has spoken about the road, but nobody has spoken about the road in Rock Hall. There are two parts of the road that are sinking. And when, Madam PM, if you want to save your buses, please ask someone to come quickly and look at it because the buses go all the way down on one side and then all the way down on the other side. So I don't want to tire anybody with going on about the roads, but our road is really, really bad. I've been living in Rock Hall for 20 years, and I, I came, I found the road bad, and it has only gotten worse. So, please have some welcome. Why was the old community facility taken down, torn down? Mama, I, I don't want to be wrong, but I'm almost certain it was under the previous administration. That it was what? Under the previous oh, administration. I understand, you do you know why it was torn down? No, ma'am. Okay, no problem. We'll investigate. Thank you very much. One more thing, ma'am, quickly. There's a temporary bridge at the bottom of Rock Hall. Um, I'm just querying if there's anything in the immediate plans to have that, to have the bridge 
reconstructed because it, um, the temporary bridge the, is two slabs and they're moving apart slowly. So it's not the most comfortable area to travel. Thank you very much. Check it out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to uh, let Rommel speak first, and then I'll just wrap up immediately thereafter. First, I just want to thank you once again for coming out and, and sharing your views. I would have encouraged many of you to come down and speak to the issues that impact your lives here in, in St. Andrew, and I'm glad that you came out and you were open, you were frank, and you were very candid about some of the things that that are impacting you here. You can rest assured that having heard everything that was said um, tonight, that both Santi and myself, Prime Minister of course, will be working hard to ensure that those, those things, especially as it relates to transportation and the roads, that those issues will be addressed. Thank you very much. I, as um, Rommel has said, I want to thank everybody for the frank discussion. It is clear that there are issues with respect to transport, roads and water, garbage collection in some instances. Part of the difficulty also is that we are dealing with an environment that is clearly not capable of handling the, the increased rainfall and is seeing increased slippage in ways that 30, 40, 50 years ago people might have suspected but still thought it was a distant possibility and not a high probability. We're living to see other ways. And in those circumstances, we are now trying to compile a resilience building plan for Barbados that will see what kind of investment we have to put on the ground for the next 10 years in order to be able to adapt to the new reality of increased heavy rainfall, increased droughts, increased um, difficulties with respect to sargassum seaweed which you are bearing regrettably the brunt of it on this coast as well so that believe you me and as i met today also with the with respect to the issue of coastal preservation not just the west coast as everybody looks at but the east coast itself is also suffering badly from coastal degradation and the narrowing of the beaches for anybody who knows out here well I've asked um, the Coastal Zone Management Unit as recent as today to be able to ensure that when we do the comprehensive plan, because we've been doing ad hoc projects across different beaches, but nothing contiguous and flowing. I've asked them not only to look at the West Coast from St. Lucie to the port, but also to look at the East Coast so that when we go, and, and this is the point that we're making, this morning, I started my morning talking to the Santi and I, the Global Climate Adaptation Center. We have to go out there and find money because a lot of what we are facing are things that not, are not as a result of anything that Barbados or the Caribbean do to cause the climate to be in this position. But you've heard me over and over, we are on the front line. And that is why we were able to negotiate and get 80 million for the Water Authority in one instance. That is why we've just gotten 15 million US in um, funds to be put in a blue-green investment bank that the government of Barbados is trying to get off the ground for Barbados and the Eastern and Southern Caribbean that will be more nimble and flexible in helping us to adapt to the new climate realities. That is why we're bringing on somebody who will be able to help the um, senior minister in charge of infrastructure, but then working with MTW and working with Ministry of Housing from the 1st of September, he is being seconded from the Caribbean Development Bank to be able to come in for two years and help us redesign all of our standards and to help manage some of these complex issues with respect to engineering that we are facing across the country. This is not the kind of world many of us expected to live in, as I keep saying, but it is what it is, and we will face it and fix it as is required. But it does mean that it is not only about us going and finding the money and finding the solutions, we're going to have to change some of our habits in terms of how we live and what we do and where we live if we are to build resilience 
and um, then Colin, you are sitting there. Every time I pass six men, I remember that there are no people living on the beach side anymore. How many of us remember when there were chattel houses with people living on the beach side in six men? How many people in here put up their hands remember when they had chattel houses on the beach side in six men? How many people remember that they used to play cricket between the chattel houses and where the waters break? And now the water coming in the middle of the road if it barely got a bad swell. That is the reality of what we're living. And that's why Mr. Lord, in fairness to him, when we came here on the last occasion, he told us, and town planning, and sometimes people like to curse town planning, but he told us, and town planning have told us, that we have to be very careful in terms of where and how we build in St. Andrew and parts of St. Joseph and parts of St. John, largely because of the manner in which the land can move. And secondly, that with respect to the disposal of wastewater, that it can do serious, serious damage, which then can undermine the integrity of the houses and the roads if we're not careful. So when we have to speak in these terms, something may have been so for decades. But the fact that it has now changed is because the circumstances have also changed. We have convection rain in Barbados for the first time in my life. We get rain coming in the afternoon. Heart intense, you get four inches of sand is reminding me in an hour. St. Lucy had four inches in an hour on Sunday morning. You remember a couple of years ago, St. Lucy flooded when you, William, we went down there and dealt with the bridges. And the people in St. Lucy told us they had never in decades seen that kind of flood in those areas in St. Lucy where it took place. So I'm asking us, please, let us work together. Let us understand that there is a science and an engineering approach. But in some instances, we may have to make decisions because the science and engineering may tell us that it is way too expensive to solve a problem one way, and we may have to find different ways of being able to support the people. Having said that, this government's commitment has been to decentralization. And we believe that you bring services to people as far as possible, and that's why we fix the old abandoned polyclinic, outpatients clinic, and that was able to open back up and you're able to use it the two days a week. We've heard the request for the dental um, chair and we will speak to the Ministry of Health about it for the dental services. Similarly, we have fixed the post office. Similarly, we are trying, as I said, to be able to put some serious money in the schools, primary and secondary across all Barbados and this parish will be no different in terms of its ability to receive it. What I do feel is that we need and we have to have a clear plan. We, we talked about it with the bridges, but in fairness, as I said, we lost a lot of time. I know that it is full steam ahead. We can probably put something together to reinforce the work of Complant because the Scotland district has unique features that the rest of Barbados does not have. But yet, it still constitutes one seventh of our land mass and we can't ignore it. So you have the commitment of this government when you really look at the facts from Dame Ermintrude born, Dame Ermintrude born right back down, the Barbados Labour Party government has been always, always focused on trying to stabilize the infrastructure in the Scotland district. And we will continue to be so because we believe that is not only the most beautiful part of this country in terms of topography, but people have lived here believe and are of the salt of the earth people that feel that they really don't want as far as possible to move out of the parish or move far from the parish and we hear you and we're going to work with you as long as the science and the engineering and our pockets allow it and we're so far we're doing it in white hill we're trying to help with the same other lady in hopewell and in the other areas that are facing problems small or large we're going to face them one by one um, with respect to the matter. Mr. Pandor and Complant, we look forward to receiving the engineering report. Transport Board, we look forward to your providing the weekly reports for the next three months because it can't be an alternative reality. It can't be that everybody got up here and spoke 
about buses in different parts of St. Andrew and saying the same thing, I don't believe that I've learned long enough to know we need to go in and understand what is happening with the deployment of buses and whether we have the right mix to be able to serve the needs of the people of St. Andrew. Let us do it, and I thank you once again for making this civic engagement worth it and to allowing us to be able to make the difference that will make people's lives better over the course of the next few months. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Uh, members of the head table, thank you very much, St. Andrew. St. Andrew has truly spoken, and we were orderly, and everybody, I believe, had their say. So next month, we will be in St. James. It will be the time for St. James to speak. So see you in St. James in a month's time. Good night.